Find the car that's right for you in a few clicks with the Mercedes-Benz online showroom. Compare all available cars from SUVs to cabriolets and all electric cars to plug-in hybrids. See all the latest retailer offers in one place and get an instant guaranteed part exchange valuation on your current vehicle. Sensationally simple. Search Mercedes-Benz online showroom and buy online today. T's and C's apply. It's game day, and this is the home of Scottish football. It's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Good afternoon and welcome to Clyde One Super Scoreboard on the kind of day that brings parts of Glasgow and the West to a standstill at Celtic v Rangers in the east end of the city with three points and the latest set of bragging rights up for grabs the Hoops lost the first meeting last season but went on to win the league so how much of a marker can be laid down today both teams have huge Champions League clashes midweek but for now there is only one show in town. I'm Gordon Duncan. Joining me this afternoon, Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Roger Hanna. Gordon, this is the afternoon when everyone forgets about Real Madrid. No one talks about going to Amsterdam for Ajax and no one is humming the Champions League theme music. They're not worried about Group A or Group F today. This is an afternoon for domestic issues, traditional rivalries and the biggest game in the Scottish football calendar. This is new drama for the old firm. Yeah, what a day ahead. It's the one that the players all look forward to. They look for the fixtures, see when the first derby game is. And it's upon us all of a sudden at Celtic Park. Celtic in free scoring form going forward. Rangers know how to defend. They've shown that in European competition. Something's got to give today. Yeah, Matt, to Matt's right about the players looking forward to it. And so does the supporters, Gordon, especially early on. The, they've been desperate for this to, um, game to come along. It's all about the bragging rights. Who will get it this afternoon? Two teams in terrific form. It's going to be a cracker. At Celtic Park for us, Andrew McLean and Jim Duffy with the team news. Yeah, well, nothing will be won here this early in the season, but an early psychological boost, bragging rights, and a spot at the top of the league table is at stake here at Celtic Park today. Celtic could be five clear by the end of play today, or a win for Rangers would see them leapfrog their rivals. It's been an impressive start for the season for both teams, Celtic. They've been free-flowing, they've been free-scoring, and they continue to add to the squad that won the title last year. Rangers have had that blip away to Hibs in the league, which means they're two points behind in the table, but Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, he's worked his magic touch in Europe again, and they've got plenty of goals in them too, which should make it a lively occasion here today. Plenty of changes from both sides as well after routine cup victories during the week. Celtic almost as expected although Lila Bada gets the nod over Dyson Maida in the front three. Joe Hart starts in goal for them today. Joseph Juranovic, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Carl Starfelt and Greg Taylor at the back four. It's Callum McGregor, Rio Hatate and Matt O'Reilly in midfield with Leila Bada and Jota either side of Kyogo. The substitutes, Segrist, Ralston, Jens, Moy, Turnbull, Maida, Forrest, Haxavanovic and Giacomakis. For Rangers, no Tom Lawrence, so they put an extra body in midfield today. Alfredo Morelos also returns to the squad. He's on the bench for the visitors for the visitors today, sorry. John McLaughlin starting in goal again. It's the back four, James Tavernier, Connor Colton, James Sands and Borna Barisic. The midfield three, John Lundstrom, Stephen Davis and Glenn Kamara. Malik Tillman and Ryan Kent will be either side of Antonio Cholak. The substitutes for Rangers, McGregor, Yilmaz, King, Devine, Jack, Arfield, Wright, Sakala and Morelos. Jim Duffy alongside me. Jim, what stands out to you in those starting lineups? I think what stands out for me is that uh, Celtic have got a healthier squad I think that's the thing, I think all their top players are available, you know there's no really, you know, someone you would think an absolute starter if he was fit, missing I think obviously they're, they're, you know, both teams are playing with tremendous confidence uh, you know, which is uh, ideal to come into this picture, the Rangers are st- obviously, as, as we know you know, it's particularly central defence, missing key players, Davis and Shooter in particular and obviously Tom Lawrence at midfield I think it's a massive blow for them um, he's been exceptional since he, he signed from Derby in the summer and I think he gives them better balance in the midfield I, I personally prefer Tillman in one rather than wide so again having to tweak it a little bit throughout the experience of Stephen Davis back in but for me if you look at the two squads I just think Celtic are in a little bit of a healthier position and, and, and don't have to tweak or, or, or change their shape in any way 
um, to, to combat this game today and I, I make them favourites particularly being at home Yeah you talk about that depth in the Celtic squad you take a look at their bench there's Maida there's Pax Ivanovic the new winger there's Giacomakis in there as well whereas Rangers have that wild card of Alfredo Morelos who returns to the squad after being frozen out really under Giovanni Van Bronckhorst over the last couple of weeks Yeah there's been uh, discussions made with uh, Morelos and uh, you know and, and the manager and uh, obviously it's up to him to force himself back in but Kolic is scoring goals like any striker Gordon will tell you that in the studio any striker scoring goals on a regular basis you're not going to leave him out no matter who's not uh, uh, you know, looking over your shoulder so he's, listen he's, um, he's a, a great um, benefit to Rangers they have him on the bench a great option if they, if they do require him I'm sure he'll be desperate to show people how talented a player he is if he gets the opportunity but um, you know from Celtic's point of view a couple of little surprises in the team, um, you know, I think that Starfelt coming in, you know, I, 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 again, is, you know, he's obviously a important part last season, but, you know, the, you know he wasn't an automatic this year, and uh, obviously a badder for me, I thought Hattati would come in for David Dunmo, but I thought Maida would play, just for that, and the energy, pressing Barajic and Sands, because I think, if anything, that's maybe the slightly weaker side of Rangers, uh, and, and I thought his energy in that, but a badder again, scoring goals, top class young player so again an embarrassment of riches for both for both teams but I think particularly for Celtic in the front area well it's already loud inside Celtic Park it will be deafening it just before kick off which is at half past 12 Mark Wilson what jumps out at the Celtic team for, for you well uh, it was hard to argue with what went on last week the the white guys were always going to be the one for me and who Ange Postacoglu went for now for for quite a long time we've been saying that Maeda never seems to get dropped he's Ange Postacoglu's favourite but when Abada puts in the performance that he did at Tanadise last week and you've got Jota in so much form supplying Kyogo, then it's a strong, strong front three. I suppose arguments for the midfield as well. Would Turnbull get a shout over Hitati? But a Riley McGregor was always going to play as a strong, strong team in form. What about the Rangers team for you, Gordon? What jumps out? Like Mark, I think there was one choice. I think with Lawrence not playing Gordon, who was going to fill that role? Um... I agree with Jim, I was listening to Jim there about Tillman, I think he's a terrific talent, but I like him in one as well, but he's went for an experience of Davis, it's going to be hectic here, the pace, everything about the game's got to be so quick, he's hoping that if Rangers get the ball, they've got the experience of Davis that can dictate the pace of it, keep the ball, he's a fantastic player, well experienced in these games, it's a strong midfield, so I think that looking at that, I was thinking maybe our field for a more attacking threat, but he's went for the experience of Steve Davis in there. Overall, Roger Hanna, what leaps out to you? Um, yeah, just as the boys were saying, everyone knew Tom Lawrence wasn't going to be there, so it was just how Rangers adapted. Um, when they went to Eindhoven, they were quite offensive, and they got the reward with a 1-0 win. They've decided to be a little bit more pragmatic. You know, we could have gone with a Scott Wright or someone like that. We could have gone with, with Fashion Sakala, who had such success at Celtic Park the last time, the tail end of the season, but he's not. He's brought in Davis alongside Lundstrom and Kamara, and, and it gives them a bit more strength against that three in the middle for Celtic. Jim Duffy, given that Tom Lawrence is unavailable, given that Rangers have defensive issues given that Alfredo Morelos is, is there but not fully fit is it safe to say Giovanni Van Bronckhorst had the, the bigger decisions to make ahead of this game? Yeah, I, I think I think so and, and obviously tactically as well, Gordon you know, I mean, the Celtic's a very, very difficult team to play against the guys are saying there if you match up against Celtic 3 but Celtic tech, strictly speaking of 5 in the midfield because Taylor and Juranovic you know, as, as we know narrow right in there at times and, and they overload that area and that, give, that would give Tillman and Kent for instance a real problem do you follow them in do you stay wide you know you know. so I think tactically uh, Giovanni Van Brockhurst has got a little bit more thinking to do obviously the very early game and his, his, his early tenure in, in his first game here at Celtic Park they sat off Celtic and allowed Celtic to dictate it from literally the first kick of the ball and the time half, half time came the, the, the game was dead and buried I think he changed that later on in the season and I think it helped him so I think I think you know, from from midfield pers- perspective, I- I'm just a wee bit interested to see how he how he lines up now. Traditionally, Davis likes to play the centre one, but Lundstrom has been magnificent there for Rangers. Um, you know, in that role, so I think he might he might just move Davis a little bit to the right, leave Lundstrom there. I think it's a big risk if he moves Lundstrom out of that centre area because I think he's got the energy, the legs, the aggression. Um, and I think you'll need that against a Celtic team who, who we all know move the ball so quickly. I mean, it's not a fixture littered with debutants, Jim. There are a couple, obviously. Antonio Cholak and Tillman would be Rangers' new signings. Um, every one of those Celtic players has, has been over this fixture last season. 
what, what can we take away? Because if you're talking about definitive moments of last season, the 3 0 was clearly one of them. You mentioned that there, Rangers were miles off it and Celtic were bang at it. A terrible combination for Rangers and a great combination for Celtic. In the games that then followed, though, towards the end of last season, I've seen Rangers fans make the case that that was a, a real mistake that night and they had learned a bit more how to how to handle the Celtic team afterwards. Would that be fair? Yeah, I think so. That's, that's the way I say it. You know, they were much better after that. So it just depends on how, how they set up and, you know, how they approach the game. I mean, Roger mentioned, you know, going to PSV and being very, you know, forward thinking and, and, and not allowing the opposition to settle into a rhythm. And I think that, that was, a, you know, if, if, if they could get a similar sort of um, response today from their team and an attitude today then I think that, that that could certainly be I think you know you can't allow um, anybody to sit off Celtic but Celtic are a very difficult team to play against tactically I mean I watch it as a coach and you're thinking how would you play against Celtic how would you line up against them because of you know the movement you know the way the full backs play the wingers are you know some, sometimes at times stay really wide other times are way inside they've got such a a, a, a fluidity of, of, of their, their movement and you know, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's such a uh, pleasing on the eye. But from Rangers' point of view, you know, tactically, as I said, uh, Giovanni Van Bruckers, I think, has been excellent since he's been in there. And I think I'm sure he'll have a game plan today. But for me, just Tillman in that right, I think he'll narrow in a little bit when they have the ball. But uh, it's just how you can affect the game going forward because I think he's an outstanding young player. And uh, as I said, I think he'll thrive in the atmosphere today. I don't think he'll be phased by it. And obviously, Kovac scoring goals. You know, he's going into this game brimming with confidence. So, yeah, listen, both teams are in a really, really good uh, position to get into the game. But, as I said, I think me personally, Celtic Park, the way Celtic are playing just now, I, I, make, I make them favourites. When you talk about big decisions managers have to make, Jim, how interesting is that one between Maeda and Abada? Because for a long time, everyone assumed that Maeda was... Ange Postacoglu's go-to guy and he really, really sets the tone for what Celtic do off the ball. How on earth do you not play a guy that scored a hat-trick last week? Yeah, yeah. well, that, 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 that's what happens when you've got a, a terrific squad, as I said to you, and the vast majority of them all fit. But, uh, listen, I, I, I'm surprised because he's the trigger. There's no doubt Maida's the trigger. Any, you know, Celtic maybe sometimes sit off a little bit, they allow one or two square passes, and then when Maida goes, everybody goes. You know, and they all know that. And the way he presses teams and puts them under pressure, and then the ball goes back to the keeper. Hugo sprints, Maeda sprints. You know, they're all up in top to force it, the long pass. So, I, 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 yeah, I'm surprised he's not played there, even though you know, as Mark says, you know, I mean, a bad scoring the hat trick. But maybe he just thinks that he'll give him a little bit more firepower. The one thing, Maeda, maybe if you want to be critical of him, is maybe just have a wee bit of composure in front of goal. Um, I just, uh, sorry, Abad is a different set of player Came in off the flank um, Baricic has got a different proposition um, Because he knows that he's got to be looking over his shoulder all the time Because of the movement of Abada And that's perhaps the reason why he's got the nod to the ahead of Maeda I, I, I'd agree with Jimmy Maeda does get a lot, of, a lot of credit for the way he presses And Celtic do you know, go off that But I wouldn't say Abada is a bad presser I think when I watch Abada and if I'm a full back the pace that he closes you down as well is not that much different from Aida. I think Jim's spot on as well. In the final third, you're probably getting a wee bit more quality with Abada going forward and end product than you would Maeda. What about Rangers firepower, Gordon? Under normal <laughs> circumstances, it would be Alfredo Morelos who leads mm -hmm. the line. I don't think we need to pour over all the details of what's going on there. Everybody knows that story. But they've got a guy that's found his shooting boots early on in his, his career in Antonio Cholak and Morelos is back today on the bench. Yeah, I think it's seven out of the last seven for Cholak. He's going in his game with bags of confidence, Gordon. Um, he's, I'll be important to see how he plays today because he's not, a, for me just now, a great back-to-goal player that Morelos will take you up the pitch, win his battles, get you the free kicks, take a bit of you know, pressure off your back men. He works the back guys, he's very energetic, he goes about it, he likes to go on the shoulder and anything comes in the box we've seen lately, he's very sharp, he knows where the back of the net is. Carter Vickers and Starfelt will really need to be on their toes this afternoon. OK, let's hear from the men who've made those big decisions that we've just been debating. Easy for us uh, to have an opinion, but it's Ange Postacoglu and Giovanni Van Bronkers. Let's start with the Celtic boss. 
You understand the, the, the sort of impact it has, particularly, as you said, on our supporters um, in these games. But all that's pretty much irrelevant if you don't play well. I mean, I, I've always laid stock in one thing, and that is you go out there and you play your football and, and try and be the best you can be. And all this other stuff tends to take care of itself. I think if you if if you need extra motivation than you did on Wednesday night or that you may need on Tuesday night, then you're never going to be successful. Our motivation has to be the same every time we're out there to, and, and that is to, to be the best we can be, play our football. And, you know, um, we understand the significance of it um, to our fans. We understand the significance of it in terms of the league. But that shouldn't mean that we're more motivated than we were on Wednesday night. And I haven't seen any evidence of that from the players. You know, they treat every game with equal respect and, and you know, equal desire to be successful. Home advantage for Ange Postacoglu. The man who's looking to go there and spoil that, of course, is Giovanni van Bronckhorst. Big game, first old firm of the of the season away. So uh, we are ready for the task. We train well. You know, it's a very uh, difficult ground to go to, but uh, we have everything to play for, and uh, we are ready for the challenge we uh, we facing. You know, the stakes are always always high in an old firm. You know, so early in the season, uh, we go out to go all in and and to win the game, and we work really hard for it. I mean, that's obviously and. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I think the, if you see all the games we played last season, they were all very close. Apart from the, the game in January, and all the other games after in the Cup and also in domestic, I think the, the margin is very, very close. And uh, that will be the same. You know, if you have games who are so close, it's going to be decided by, by details. And uh, we have to make sure that uh, the details uh, w- which will make the difference will be uh, on our side. Is that the reality of it, Roger Hanna? This has been a classic week on Clyde One Super Scoreboard because fans are full of bravado and full of confidence and are determined to point out that we are much better than them and this will be shown today. Now look, it might end up a a big win for either side but the head-to-heads last year would tell you there's not a lot between the sides. Well, if you'd come down from space you would have known from last Saturday that this was a build-up to an old firm week when we had a caller talking about a refereeing decision in the 1977 <laughs> Scottish Cup final between Celtic and Rangers. Um, it, it only happens in a week like this. A, both sides, because it's the first derby of the season, because both sides have been going well, Gordon, they're desperate to try and seize the bragging rights. This will have a big impact on the season. I, I'm reading all over the place, you know, it's not this won't affect what happens in the league. Of course it will, because we're in a season where Rangers and Celtic are miles ahead of the rest. I don't anticipate a huge number of points being dropped by either against the other ten. Therefore, the four derbies are probably as important as they've ever been. Yeah, but- well, well, I was going to say, last season blew away some of the the cliches that we throw out about the first one being a marker. Celtic lost the first one, went on to win yeah. the league, right? So you don't need to win it, obviously. But, again, to then contradict that... If you look at the number of points that were between Celtic and Rangers at the end of the season and then you consider the fact that Celtic took more points than Rangers in the head-to-heads there's actually not that much other ground to make up Quite similarly, the guys mentioned the 3-0 game in February Had Rangers gone to Celtic Park that night and won Rangers would have been champions It's as simple as that That's the importance of these head-to-heads One result can effectively swing a title well, listen to that. The atmosphere's building already at Celtic Park. Ten minutes to kick off, and that kick off is coming after these. The Super Scoreboard podcast is sponsored by Taggart's Motor Group. Taggart's have Jaguar, Land Rover, and Volvo showrooms across Glasgow and the West, so you can find the new or used approved car that's right for you. And as Taggart's are part of the Lookers family, one of the largest franchise dealer groups in the UK, you can browse thousands of nearly new and used vehicles in stock nationwide to find your perfect vehicle. They've also launched Click and Sell. It makes selling your car simple by using their trusted dealer network of over 150 sites. Why not give it a go today? See how much you could make on your old car Taggart's have Land Rover showrooms in Motherwell, Darnley and the north of Glasgow with their Jaguar and Volvo showrooms found in Hillington Check out taggarts.co.uk to get your new or used approved Land Rover, Jaguar or Volvo today Now let's get back to the podcast Find the car that's right for you in a few clicks with the Mercedes-Benz online showroom Compare all available cars from SUVs to cabriolets and all electric cars to plug-in hybrids See all the latest retailer offers in one place and get an instant guaranteed part exchange valuation on your current vehicle. Sensationally simple. Search Mercedes-Benz online showroom and buy online today. 
T's and C's apply. The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Five minutes to go All the pre-match talk All the bravado All the boasting About whose team's going to win All the debates About who should play the game It's all about To meet the final destination And it's Celtic Park For Celtic against Rangers In five minutes time Gordon DL Mark Wilson Roger Hanna In the studio Jim Duffy Alongside Andrew McLean At Celtic Park Home advantage Jim How much do you, do you buy into that? How big a factor is that today? Yeah, I think it is a, a, a factor. Um, you know, Celtic's record at Celtic Park is, is, is phenomenal, really, you know, in terms of domestic football. So, you know, you would have to say, it doesn't matter whether, who they're playing, including their greatest rivals, um, that, 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 I think that confidence, that belief that, you know, they're almost unbeatable here, um, then I, I think that, that's, that's got to resonate within the dressing room. And I think the players are out there totally believing um, that this is a, another game. And we heard... Ange Postacoglu is saying unless he understands what it means to support but they're trying to focus on the preparation and a normal preparation um, now listen Mark, Mark and I'll tell you it's maybe it's maybe different to that to the players the manager tries to keep the calmness but you know you can probably hear in the background they, they, they crank up the atmosphere and it is a, con- a completely unique atmosphere in these games Gordon you've got to be able to handle it and uh, you know that's also a part of it and the Celtic players obviously would look to thrive on it and it'll be interesting to see how those two new uh, Rangers players for this occasion in terms of Kolach and, uh, and Tillman how they respond to it uh, and, and, and that, that, that is a little bit of a test but as I mentioned right at the very start if you look at Rangers you know, they can't really afford any injuries here in the defensive side I mean Sands and, uh, and Goldson are pretty much the only two central defenders they have at their disposal so you know there's got to be a little bit of concern just in case they do have to change anything um, if they do have to go to plan B but listen it's an electric atmosphere as you would expect and again it's one as you said it's been building up now for, for the last week and I'm sure that uh, you know the players won't let us down I think it'll be a phenomenal occasion Yes we can't be far away from the teams coming out onto the pitch at Celtic Park so let's hand back over to Andrew McLean he'll recap those starting 11s and the subs and take us up to the big kickoff. Yeah, just waiting for the team to make their way out of the tunnel at the moment for Celtic. It'll be Joe Hart that starts in goal for them. The back four, Joseph Juranovic, Cameron Carter Vickers, Carl Starfelt, and Greg Taylor. The midfield three, Callum McGregor, Rayo Hatati, and Matt O'Reilly, Ray Lavada, and Jota either side of Kyogo. The substitute at Ange Botacoglu's disposal today. Sigrist, Ralston, Jens, Moy, Turnbull, Maida, Forrest, Haktabanovic, and Giacomatis. As for the visitors, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, has gone for John McLaughlin in goal at the back four of James Tavernier, Connor Goulton, James Sands and Borna Barisic. The midfield three, John Lundstrom, Stephen Davis and Glenn Kamara, Alex Tillman and Ryan Kent supporting Antonio Cholak up top. The substitutes for Rangers, McGregor, Gilmaz, King, Devine, Jack, Arfield, Wright, Sakala and Alfredo Morelos. The referee for this one today is Nick Walsh and as we look ahead of us here, Jim, there's a green and white flag that the Celtic fans have out at the moment, there's a banner that says today we dare to win, there's also the pocket of blue, white and red over to our right where the away fans are tucked away in the corner as they are here at Celtic Park and at this moment there's nothing quite like it Jim Duffy, whether it's Celtic Park, whether it's Ibrox, this moment right before kick-off, the anticipation, the tension ahead of one of these games. Yeah, you can almost feel the nerves right around the stadium, but I, I love the fact that I think the fans here, I think it's great for the occasion, yeah, we like it a little bit more, just to create that wee bit extra special atmosphere, but I think it's been long overdue that away fans go to these games, so it's great to see, listen, the, the occasion, as we know, will be electric, uh, but we just hope that the uh, players perform on the day. I think it's a great thing as they the game, building the conference. I mean, I know they, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's a poor result to do it, uh, have, but generally speaking, we've been some terrific football, fantastic to see the challenges, um, you know, great stages, which is an outstanding achievement for them. So, beginning this game with the best one of mine, the post of the good coming here, uh, uh, in this uh, game in this manner, and Celtic, as you know, a goal goes for much. So, you know, I think it'll be a very open game. Um, there's not a lot of really aggressive players on the pitch in terms of you know, old school, if you want to call it that. There's a lot of talented technical footballers. So I think it will be 
that type of game, I think it'll be an open, attractive game. I uh, hope I'm not disappointed. I hope I'm not setting them up for, for uh, the opposite. Well, the teams have made their way out onto the pitch. Celtic led by captain Callum McGregor. Rangers led by James Tavernier. Two players who have vast experience in this fixture. Jim Duffy, you were just touching on it there. There's goals in this game. I don't want to jinx it yeah, because that often hoping. happens, but these teams, they have both been free scoring. They've scored a lot of goals so far yeah. this season, and you would hope certainly for the neutral that there is plenty of goals in this game. Yeah, I hope so. And again, tactically, as we said, will Rangers set off Celtic to start me and assess the game or will they come after them and try and close them down? I think a big moment, you know, it's a pivotal, a pivotal moment, but it's a, it's a, a difficult moment again for John McLaughlin. Alan McGregor so, so long has been the number one for Rangers and they pulled off some magnificent saves these games. So I think a goal for John McLaughlin, yeah, I know he's got experience, but this type of game is still relatively inexperienced. So how will he handle the occasion with those Celtic fans behind his goal, parading him at every time he can do the ball? So I think a big key for him, uh, as I said, but you know, you know how he deals with it, I think will be very important. It's still so early in the season, but Rangers will not want to drop five points behind Celtic, even though there's a lot of football to be played, even psychologically to go five points behind this early in the campaign. Rangers will not want that. No, of course not, because it gives Celtic breathing room, and that's one thing that Celtic team don't need. You know, they're, they're talented enough to take hand in them at a gap. Which, uh, yeah, listen, we know it's a long, long way to go and it can certainly, it can certainly close that. But for anything, I think Rangers will want to make sure they take something from this game. But to do that, they're going to be, have to be their very best in every department. Ryan Kent is standing over the ball here at Celtic Park. It's the first Old Firm clash of the season. And we are just about to get underway. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Canvas Lang Showroom now open to the public. It is showtime, Roger Hanna. Listen to that atmosphere by way of comparison. There is a Merseyside derby that's just kicked off at the same time, and this feels like a completely different footballing planet altogether. It doesn't get much better than this. It does not. First Old Firm derby of the season. Everything they play for. Either team could be top of the Premiership table by round about 20 past two, Gordon. Go on, Mark Wilson. Give us the first of the dud predictions for the afternoon. I fancy Celtic strongly. Um, free scoring, I'm going to go for Celtic 3, Rangers 1. Gordon DL. Well, I know what Rogers going for, so I'm going to make sure there's a winner in here. I'm thinking with Rangers away performance in Eindhoven, I'm going to go a sneaky 2-1 Rangers. 2-1 Rangers. I can't believe he's given your prediction away. Roger Hanna, what are you thinking? <laughs> well, I gave the away sun. The, the sun this morning, so I'm going for a 1-1 draw. I don't think it hurts either side. It's the beginning of an enormous week for both. Celtic would stay two points clear. Rangers would get a packhead trip out the way. Well, and then they could focus on the Champions I'll League. I'll tell you what does hurt. Kyogo's shoulder inside 40 seconds. Uh, John Lundstrom flew in just to, to make himself present. Uh, I don't think there was anything necessarily over the top with the with the, the challenge. But Kyogo looks in a bit of discomfort already. And Jackie Marcus is out warming up. Mark Wilson. Mm, I might need to change my prediction after 40 right. seconds. Just because... Kyogo is the star man at the minute banging goals in every week he looks like he could be alright but it's a sore you, you don't often see yeah, him stand in for that long he's a sore one Mar I, I, hopefully for Celtic um, concerned he'll run that off he'll be okay it's a bit shoulder but you said there about junior I don't think Celtic fans would be that upset with the quality that comes back on the back because Jackie Marcus knows oh, where the back is. I know that, but come on. You don't want to get you don't want to oh, forced oh, into course. a change of 50 I'll, seconds on the clock. Of course, look, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is the the quality of the even the subs, I don't think it would you would automatically you don't want, go you out, don't want change either. my mind. You don't want to keep him off the pitch for too long because it was so important. And that game way back, it was a, a February, the Celtics started so quickly, pinned Rangers in so quickly. If they're down to 10 men for a minute or so, then it just allows mm. Rangers to gradually build into the game. Well, Roger, if, if Kyogo is even going to continue, the the assessment has taken quite a while. Yeah, he's off there with Sam Williamson, the physio on the far side. Um, they're trying to put that shoulder joint through a few he's a not, few different movements. Mm, he's he's going, I'm not sure, you he's know. He's walking around. I think Kyogo might be done inside 50 seconds, unless he's, oh, no, no, he's, he's back on. Yeah. Never mind. Ah, he's teasing us. Why didn't I just come back on where he ah, was? Exactly. Where was Tim gone we walked there, down there. Because you know we're watching. Oh, they're good mates, Tim. You and Tim. Spent a lot of time together. Did he used to walk you up and down the, 
that was that. I never got on the pitch. Harley, you just sub. mean him went on nice walk. Now it's Rangers doing the early conference stuff with the ball, passing it around, and it's just going to go yeah. out of play. There was a few nice uh, passes in there, but as they looked Tillman to Tavernier, out of play. Do you know the the one thing I've noticed already, and I'm sure the boys at Celtic Park will notice it. The minute that ball goes out of play, the ball boys are going to be the busiest guys in Glasgow this afternoon. Joe Hart, the ball went out of play from Rangers mm. there. Joe Hart had the ball in his hands within. Seconds. Oh, nope, Keel goes down and he's holding the shoulder. Three minutes gone now, but he picked up the injury inside 50 seconds. And that, I think, is going to be that, Mark Wilson. It looks like it. And what is concerning is I don't think these are quick fixes as well. You know, when you, you get a dunt like that on your shoulder, and it is a, a hefty one from Lundstrom on the shoulder. Um, it just looks like his arm is outstretched. I don't think Lundstrom's meant it. He's thundered mm-hmm. into a tackle, uh, but it's a sore unit. And when Celtic have got such a busy schedule coming wow. up. It's not an mm, ideal that, time to lose him. I think that's just coincidence. He's going to win the ball. His arm seems. Lundstrom's arm is up. Kyogo's arm is out. They're, 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 it seems minimal contact. Doesn't seem to be much there, he, Gordon. He, but he does seem to be in serious pain. No, I, I agree with you, Gordon. We've watched it a few times now in the replays, and you're thinking, well, there's not a lot in it. But obviously, a lad's in a bit of pain. You can clearly tell that. He's went off, he's had treatment tried it and he didn't even get involved in any of the play he knew right away he's a player Mark, Jim and, I, and people will tell you he's played you know right away if you can carry on but I, I totally I take on board what you, you guys are saying about you don't want to change things quickly or whatever but as mm. much as it will be a lost Kyogo this guy to me yeah. this guy to me is quality yeah I don't think anyone's questioning Jackie Marcus's ability but Mark you lose your star striker and the top scorer in the league after an incident 50 seconds into a game like this that cannot be described as anything other than a massive blow. Of course, it affects you and it'll affect the players for a couple of minutes to get used to. Especially Jack and Marcus, because you've got to think your mindset. You know, you've prepared differently from when you're starting and you're sitting on the bench. You're a wee bit of a different what is, what is the warm up situation in terms uh, look, of how different uh, uh, it is? Uh, uh, I've not seen Celtic this season. Jim Duffy will be able to tell you more. He's he's watching it. But sometimes the subs would get taken away and they would do a certain other thing with a sports scientist while the starting eleven would work on something else. So it'd be interesting to know, you know, how much Jack Marcus is is put into his warm up. But no idea. That's a thing. I think that's a thing. I know that the games totally changed from, especially my day and Jim's day, but. You know, it baffles me because you never know an injury in the mm. first minute. You never know a sending off that obviously managers change their tactics and bring people off. You've got to be ready at any point of the game from the minute the whistle blows. In our day, I know I keep going back to it, but you used to warm up. It was the same warm up. So basically, you were ready to go on that pitch. In fairness, right? Sports can, science yeah, now. Can, can, can we assume there is a bit more thought put into it now? 100%. Than, it, but, than in your day. Yeah, uh, yes, but uh, you bit... used to just swan about with a cup of tea just yeah, before the game. Yeah, yeah but I, I had the ability just to switch that light on, Gordon. That fire in the belly, <laughs> light it, ready to go. Uh, I mean, it's taken six minutes because it's been really such a disrupted start. But that's the, the sort of first uh, we've seen of Celtic sort of confident play from them, building up the rotations that we're used to, getting in down the sides, and it just sort of broke down at the last minute. But it's the first sort of encouraging. Uh, sign Ange Postacoglu will have seen he certainly won't have been encouraged to see Kyogo go off uh, after picking up at something on his shoulder 50 seconds in this uh, this left hand side right hand side for Rangers is going to be fascinating Jota against Tavernier Tavernier has come on immensely from his first couple of years at Rangers defensively but I don't know if he comes up against many people like Jota who can go either way and is so clever on the ball but equally going the other way Jota's going to have to track Tavernier You can't leave it all for Greg Taylor to do So it'll be a fascinating contest Shows a wisdom, Gordon Of why Ange Postacoglu moved in In the last week of the transfer on And added a couple of players You know, people are asking He's gone for Haksabanovic He's gone for Abelgard Why does he need these players? Well, he needs players because Celtic have a big schedule coming up And you're going to pick up injuries There's really, Kiel out the game well, in a minute or two Really good defending from James Sands though If that was one of the question marks It's a corner Celtic though um, and Ryan Kent does brilliantly just takes it off the toe of O'Reilly I think who was uh, daydreaming um, but yeah there was a ball over the top Jota got there and to be fair Mark Wilson hold on chance at Celtic Park and we've got an opening goal in the big one Goal Flashes 
with Clydebilt Home Improvements. Celtic strike first, and it's that man, Lil Abada. So much pre match discussion. Who should play? Should it be him? Should it be Maeda? The guys pointed out he has the superior goal threat. He did it in the fixture last season, and a similar type of goal in from that right hand side, finishing. Low beyond John McLaughlin Who got a hand to it And it's Celtic 1 Rangers 0 Rangers are furious There's a throw in On the far side That the Rangers felt Was there Ryan Kent When he cleared out The initial corner Tried to get past A Celtic player He claims it came off The Celtic player last Rangers stopped Because they thought It was their throw in Celtic took it quickly Dare I see echoes Of the 89 Cup final That was mentioned In the show last Saturday Gordon well, we'll probably end up arguing over a throw-in because that's that's you know what we do, Gordon. Well, let's get to the goal first, and then we'll take another look at the build-up to it. Yeah, it's just the, it's just the way Celtic win the ball quickly. And I said earlier, Gordon, the ball boys are going to be the quickest. It's a ball in the box. See, for me, in the Rangers' point, they've got to defend that better. Yeah, John the goalkeeper has got to do better, but take nothing away from a bad. He's in the position, gives himself opportunity. It's not the greatest strike, but. I'll tell you what There were question marks Maeda or Abada Well done The manager's got it right so It's far. the speed You mentioned the, the ball boys does. Uh, Right It was Jota that time It gets you through on Everything's so quick From a Celtic point of view Huge credit to Abada Because getting a wide guy To attack that Part of the, the box Is In between crucial. the sticks as In they say. between the sticks And he's so good at it isn't It's he? a nightmare for full backs And people uh, Like myself I'm automatically thinking Where's Barisic It wasn't Barisic's fault That time because Sands was in about an uncompromising position and what a start but a I, I agree with you I think I actually think McLaughlin should save that yeah 100% John McLaughlin can save but, it he gets but down but to his the left defending. Gets, when that ball comes I, in the box I, the defenders I, are all dropped I, off I, does, I agree with you because I think the defenders stop thinking it's a Rangers throw in that is a big mistake by Rangers but take all that out of the equation just look at the last act the last act is a shot by Obada Obada that is not hit particularly hard the goalkeeper gets something on it and can't keep it out yeah, and I agree. at what time will we get the first Alan McGregor would have saved that call yeah yeah uh, listen at the end of the day goalkeepers have got to make big saves in big games I think when the manager looks at it he looks at it I've got mm. to say the defence because Celtic are so quick I highlighted it right away the ball boys are as quick as I've ever seen just getting the ball in they want to play at a tempo bad defending bad goalkeeping and and as Mark quite rightly said you know with uh, Kyogo go off it might take Celtic players get a bit of time to adjust and in fairness although people can be angry uh, <laughs> if, if, if they want Roger when you see it back it does does it look it looks like it comes off Ryan Kent last for yeah, the throw in yeah I think it does come off Ryan Kent last the point I was making was Rangers seem to mm. stop and complain Giovanni yeah. Van Bronckhorst in the sideline complaining to the fourth official about it I think Nick Walsh I need to see it again I think Nick Walsh has probably called it right but Ryan Kent mm. led the protest no my worry no my worry quickly there Roger you've you're touched that point doesn't matter if it if it's a Celtic Rangers throw in right I agree with you I think that Celtic right. surely the manager that's the last thing you say to these players walking out the door. Make sure mm. we're, the minute of ball, you know Celtic are got to do that. You've got to switch on. And they'd had warnings. They had warned you. You pointed out two or three minutes earlier how quickly the ball <laughs> was getting like, but, recycled. But, look, I, I, it's not lost on me. We we love the drama. We love the debates on this show. It keeps us ticking. But I think we need to be careful to not you know overdo it. We've just seen it back, Mark. Huh. That that comes off Ryan Kent. Yeah. That's a Celtic throw. So clear as day. You've got to give credit to a referee. Yeah, because he spots it right away and give credit to Celtic players for recognising it it's clear as day it was a Celtic throw so n no issue there from Van Bronckers' point of view he may have thought He's all the way over the yeah, other yeah. side of the pitch but no no question of it but just the pace that Celtic have, have started even losing Kyogo I thought they might have been a wee bit sluggish but oh. definitely not Giacomakis bundles over James Sands Referee Nick Walsh Didn't like it Jackie Mackey says It was just a shoulder challenge He was just stronger What was your well, Take on that one? No, nah, if I'm a, a, like a, a If I'm a defender I'm asking for a foul there as yeah. well Yeah yeah, But I, I don't mind that For Jackie Marcus. Letting Sands know This is this is what you're up against uh, today Is this, is this the, the strikers union yeah, here Because um, you think that's okay Don't I th you? I think that's perfectly okay I think that's just uh, Being strong Getting in there Determined to win the ball um, and I think he's a wee bit unlucky there but this game has been played at such a pace now it's incredible we were talking about would it be one of those games we built up so much it'd be a boring nil-nil there's not even 13 minutes on the clock and we've got excitement we've got drama and we've got a goal well, to be fair the one thing that is an absolute certain guarantee 
is that the pace will be through the roof, Roger. I mean, sometimes that actually is to the detriment of the fixture and then the quality dips, but the pace is absolutely always there. Yeah, it's unrelenting. And now the Rangers are trying to get back into the game. Lundstrom, a central figure again, and Ryan Kent. That, that's a big setback for Rangers. But last season, if you remember, in the, the, the second game after the split here at Celtic Park, Celtic scored early, I think Jota scored. Rangers come right back into the game. Yeah, and a rare slack moment really from Callum McGregor was what gave Rangers the impetus there. He gave the ball away, tried to turn inside, lost it, and it gave a, a mini period of uh, pressure from Rangers, but it doesn't come to much uh, in the end. And this is good from Celtic. That's a nice one too. Jota's away, but he's got the pass wrong. Just wonder if he could have held on to it, Mark. In I think fact, so. hold on. Yeah. This is relentless. Celtic still have it. Give it away. Get it back for a second time. Jota outside the box. Rangers win it back. Sometimes... Gordon, we love it. We love the tempo, but you're looking for a bit more quality uh, possession wise. I mean, there again, oh. Abada's down in the box. He wants a penalty. I'm mm. sure the shouts were loud, but yeah. um, half hearted claims at the moment. There goes Jack and Marcus. Great sliding tackle from him. It is, uh, it's incredible. He shoots over. See, see, the big thing here is for Rangers players, they've got to get into their head. They're not going to get any time the ball. This Celtic team are at you the minute. The minute you get that ball, they are at you. You're struggling to get your head up to look for a pass. They're so full of uh, energy. They're playing at a high tempo and big claims there for a penalty kick. Uh, what do you a make difficult of those one to yeah. call because was it one from on the way back there? Kent, I think. Was yeah, it Kent? Ryan Kent coming back. And when Abada goes to shoot, Kent's behind him. He's, Abada's leg gets caught in between Kent's. Listen, you've seen them given. You've definitely seen them given. There's contact there. Abada doesn't get the shot off because of the contact. I think Rangers mm. are fortunate. It's, Look, a, it's a strange one. I think Ab Abada sort of initiates the contact, if you like. Kent's presence there is incidental. He pulls the leg mm. back to shoot. He makes contact with Kent and goes down. I, I think I, that's why I Nick agree. Walsh. I think it would be very. Uh, there'd have been a very hard show. I, I, I'm yeah. with Mark a little bit. You can see them. Do you know what's annoying me? There I was, think it was. There was one quite similar in a game recently, and I just cannot remember what it is. I appreciate that's no use to any of you, but I'll remind because you do see them sometimes when yeah. the the shooter, if you like, pulls his mm. leg back, and when he goes back, it, that's when the contact happens and they fall over. And, if you are Ryan Kent, you're probably saying, "Well, oh, I've not done much wrong yeah. there." But if you're a badder, you're also saying, "But his leg has caused me exactly. to exactly." And I think that's that's the problem. That's the argument why it was a penalty. Ryan Kent has got himself into a poor position, which means a badder's leg gets caught when he goes to shoot, meaning a badder doesn't get the shot away. So, I think there's argument that that was a penalty. Um, I actually think a badder took the wrong option. Have you seen Juranovic? Oh, yep. He's sprinting outside him. He could have just played him in, and uh, it was a great chance, but. Celtic all over Rangers I mean it, it's shadowing pretty yeah, just, much the game just, sorry, just as a bit of an update that was a great tackle from Jack and Marcus, but John Lundstrom came off worse he's been getting a, quite a lengthy treatment he's taken what I assume are a couple of ibuprofen or the likes to, to get him back in track and, and he does come back on but he doesn't look like he's too comfortable now either no and listen and broadly speaking take the incidents out Rangers will need to defend better Rangers are not defending well enough to repel this Celtic side they've lost a goal already in the opening 16 minutes there were penalty shouts there in the next Celtic attack the Rangers back four do not look comfortable at the minute Yeah, I, I think I think the full Rangers team don't look that comfortable Roger because they're not getting any time whatsoever in the ball the minute the ball's going out the pitch Celtic are getting it in as quick as I've ever seen they're playing at such a tempo Rangers have got to try somehow get a grip of the ball and start making some passes Different, different style there Celtic Celtic went long with a free kick done it a very, couple of times now. very seldom see them do that and that's what Jack Amakis offers them that maybe Kyogo doesn't he is more I hesitate to say target man because there's more to his game than that but it does give them that option and particularly at a time when Goldson mm. and Sands look uncomfortable against them that's quite the stat oh John Lundstrom's oh. lost out there and here comes Celtic but it's deflected and it's going to be a corner Lundstrom Mark almost trying too hard to do that physical side of the game and be that enforcer and, and just leaving the ball for Celtic who take the corner so quick it's almost like they don't realise that we're trying to describe the action yeah I wish they would slow down action, yeah, chat. I think that Rangers midfield right now have just been overrun you think the players have got in there as well and the experience and the physicality Celtic just running off them bypassing them and making it incredibly difficult for Rangers back four to stem the tide See if I was Rangers just now I'd be a bit concerned This game could get away mm, from yeah. me Before half time Because Celtic 
They've got that goal. Look at the way they're passing. Look at the way they're running, moving. Oh, oh it's a big that. chance for Jack Amakis. He doesn't even get his head on the ball. He's about six yards out, centre of the goal, good height, and somehow the ball doesn't even land on his forehead. And there's a player behind him, I think it might be Jota, Jota Gordon, who thinks Giamakis is going to head it in. He's on his heels because he thinks Giamakis is scoring. I mean, Giamakis misses it. He's look got at, to look score where Jota that. is. Look He's where Jota is. He for, could have topped it in as well. Forget that, Roger. He's got to score yeah. that. He has got to score that. And for, if that's what I'm saying. This game could get away from Rangers yeah. for they're not careful. Forget scoring it, Mark. How does he not even get his head on it? Yeah, I know. That's that's the disappointing thing because it's such a good ball in and he's so good in that position usually he must just take his eye off the ball for an instant he, he might just think it's too easy um, and he's taking his eye off and let Rangers off the hook the one thing you would say though Ange Postacoglu said they've been in this position before you mm. remember the last game and they were so dom dominant yeah, they didn't absolutely. get the second goal and Rangers were the better team in the second half so this is an important period for both teams if Celtic score they will not be caught but if Rangers can just stem the flow they might think they're in their chance yeah, we've seen it a few times, Gordon. Celtic, do they start quick all the time. But here come Rangers. They're at the edge of the box and they do get a fairly ropey shot away. Uh, Celtic start quick, Gordon. Mm -hmm. um, Barisic will be the first booking of the day. Pulls back a bad at, I think, as he spun inside them. It's a long old day coming up against yeah. Celtic's wingers, Mark, if you're booked after 19 minutes. Yeah, I think this is poor from Barisic because he just gets done too easily. He's in too quick to a bad and he makes it easy for him. Is the thing, Gordon... You know, sometimes we're told that's good. You know, you take one for the team, you stop an attack. He's, he's got two teammates next to him, and a bad yeah. is midway inside his own half. Does he need to pull him back? No, and you put yourself under pressure with 19 plus minutes on the clock, Gordon. You're one down already. You know that Celtic have got to play Slack, though, pace. Celtic, Glenn Kamara nips in and takes it. And Rangers, you know, they're doing the same. They're trying to play quick. They take that free quick uh, very quickly indeed. Um, we we'll get back to poor. Go back to a quick point, Gordon. As much as Celtic are playing at this terrific pace, there's John Lundstrom, another foul there. Yeah. Nick Walsh is not too happy with him. Yeah, he's, he's not got had a, he's not had a, a few so far. Lundstrom and he's he's not been booked. I think what probably saves him there in the eyes of the ref. I'm not saying this is correct. Is that O'Reilly might not be getting on to to that ball, Roger? Yeah. I, I, I still that, think that, if you book that, Barisic, that's you book him. But that's why though, because Barisic is the classic stop in a promising attack, yeah. whereas. Mm. Maybe it's just a bit more debatable him. whether O'Reilly was getting the ball I'm just trying to get inside Nick Walsh's head which is a place that no person should ever spend their Saturday afternoon but that's what we're here for Yeah, he's, he's doing alright so far I've got to say contentious penalty call maybe but got the throw in right booking right usually we're we're chatting about the referee and how he's having a nightmare so far plenty of time credit. Yeah. yeah it's only 20 minutes Mark Calm down, going too early. But uh, I was talking about the energy and the pace of Celtic playing it. It'd be very difficult. We know that it'd be very difficult to play live for 90 minutes. So at one point, Rangers will need to get a grip of this game and try and get back in. They've, they've, they've recovered a little bit just now. The thing, the thing about that is, Gordon, that's not even speculation. That's just what we saw last season. Yeah, but the problem is when Tavernier goes forward, Mark was talking about... Here comes Celtic again. Mark it's flashed across. The, that is very well defended. Was that James Sands? It was yeah. James Sands. Yeah. Yeah. Really well done. Gold, Tavernier was up the park. Goldson got pulled out to deal with Jota. I mean, when Jota put the cross in, it needed Sands to come over from the left centre half. To right centre half to clear oh, the ball. That's his best bit from, of defending. Brilliant from Ryan Kent, who it seems like he's had the ball for about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Carries Rangers all the way up the pitch, evades all sorts of tackles. It's, it's a brilliant game of football so far. Jota at one end there, great defending for Sands, and then that piece of skill there for Kent. Just luring Juranovic in, nutmegging him, and then just managed to keep the ball on a string almost. Here's Barisic then. Dangerous oh, oh, position. Oh. Big chance. Rangers' biggest chance for sure. It goes out for a throw in, but similar. To the Jackie Marcus one a few moments ago. Oh, does Cholak have to score? Um, I'll tell you what, Barisic can't do any more. That ball is qu oh got yes, to score. he's he's got to get his head. That's a Jackie Marcus for me. <laughs> see, see a striker, especially in forum seven out of seven. That ball, all you have to do is get your head in that ball and direct it. Because it paces on the cross Me fantastic. Remember the opening day of the season at Livingston He <laughs> scored one yes, like that was, and yeah. he, was, he was actually just like you know a, a millimetre or two offside He was onside there Just couldn't repeat the feed And Mark that's what it takes Look I'm not going to hammer ifs, buts and maybes too much Because someone will be quick to point out That these things happen And Celtic had one at the other end But for all Celtic's dominance Rangers could be level there Yeah exactly And you know Harley got a foothold in the game at all But one piece of quality in You switch off Cholak should score 
Um, so it's a wee warning sign for Celtic. Mm, it's just a bomb. Oh, I was going to say. Wow. Yeah. I was unlucky. I thought it was over hit from Abada until Jota pulls out an unbelievable touch. Uh, but in, in the end, it's like he's sort of second or third touch that he can't keep it with. And uh, Rangers do come away. I would just be a little bit concerned down that side. Jota seems to be the out ball for Celtic. Um, you know, if he if he pulled that down there, he's one against one with Golson, not Tavernier. Tavernier is obviously pushing up. J- uh, Jota's going in between and thinking, right, the minute we get the ball, we'll hit them down the left hand side. And it seems to be working as they come yeah, down the right. Yeah, they come the right side now. And uh, Abada's just going to stand up, Borna Barisic, step over one way and the other. Uh, and just floats one in back post well defended Ooh, a bit scrappy in the in the box from Rangers perspective um, it's not clear yet you know but that's better Matt O'Reilly loses out and that will be a free kick it's relentless stuff end to end there if I'm if I'm Barisic I'm, I'm concerned now that if a badder stands me up like that I'm on a book in the history of playing here it's going to be a long old first half for him the way this is going I wonder if Van Bronckhurst is even contemplating looking at his bench at half time for that I know that's early but look what happened last time round when he left it everybody was crying out saying it is so obvious the one the, thing is Barisic uh, went the other side and the put a on quite, we need a water break in here <laughs> as the game goes on Mark there'll be more of an onus on Rangers to push forward where the Rangers push forward from is from the wide areas to get their width from the two full backs Celtic are waiting for Tavernier and Barisic to put to, to move forward and then Abada and Jota are just passing them on to the, yeah. to the Celtic yeah, fullbacks, and they're staying high and wide for the recycled ball but do you notice what Rangers have been doing this a lot recently at, they do that on one side it seems but on the left they actually allow Barisic to almost go in to, towards a sort of back three and like, did you see how deep Brian Kent was picking up the ball he, he, just a second ago quite often he's now getting it in his own half um, and trying to make that work but I tell you what he's shown some brilliant footwork this afternoon already Mark yeah, he's on form. He looks like he's in the mood, and Juranovic has got his hands full. It's an interesting battle. Here's the first time we've seen James Tavernier so often an important figure for Rangers. Just works it in. Lundstrom's there. They're kind of working it across. It's that more sustained possession now from Rangers, and seeing if Celtic can stay disciplined. And Glenn Kamara does brilliantly uh, down that left hand side. It's maybe not his game or what, what you expect, but he's, he's done ever so well. I think it's been a good response from Rangers in the last five minutes. Yeah. They've started getting a hold of the ball. I know what Mark was saying there about uh, Barisic, but I think you've got to trust your fullback. I know it's difficult, of course it is, but he's put the best ball in for Rangers for the opportunity. I think he's got so much quality in the left foot. He's put another lovely mm. ball in there. So I, I certainly wouldn't be thinking of uh, making a change just now and taking him off. I, t- I totally understand he's running the risk. Another silly tackle and they could both the pitch but the quality in his left foot down the left hand side is too important for Rangers especially 1-0 down this is a more interesting period Roger it's, you know, Rangers have sustained possession and are just working it across a bit more patient whereas Celtic are having to get almost everyone behind the ball yeah they, they look comfortable defending Celtic you know, they're, they're defending deep they're defending in numbers Celtic the thing Rangers need to do there, there hasn't been a you know anyone forced Joe Hart into action yet? A couple of decent positions, a Cholak mm. chance that you know was just glanced across the face of goal. But the Celtic goalkeeper has not had anything to do. Celtic look a little bit unsure there, Mark. They win the ball back off Rangers, and there was an air of panic from Abada, who just sort of chipped it up the pitch to yeah. no one, and it allows Rangers to regroup and come again. Well, you see the problems when Rangers keep the ball and move it from side to side, and have Celtic get everybody back. When they win the ball back, they've not got guys high and wide, and Jack and Mark is up through the middle, and that's what causes that. Panic. Panic. So Van Bronckers, I think, will be delighted at this last five minutes. Just Rangers getting a real grip on the game. But it's always that danger when they lose it that Celtic with the pace have got. Oh, what a pass that is from yeah. Hatati. Unbelievable. On we're the ta- volley. We were talking about Tillman, and I agree with Jim, I like him in, but he's not really settled in so far. Mm. Uh, he looks like he's getting caught up a little bit well, in that, this fixture. Yeah, that's nice he's, possession from Celtic. Iranovic goes for an early cross. Not sure he needed to mark. He had a lot of space in front of him. Jack and Mac has hit some sort of volley that, that goes well wide. Could they not have yeah. progressed with the ball? Quite unusual, that. I mean, Hitati picks him out beautifully and it opens up in front of him and he just she's puts a cross in for about 40 yards. Never really center, see Celtic doing that. She's a centre forward. I'm happy with that ball. I think happy with a, that ball? Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you think I can his volleys up to about 16 you, yards? Asking you to score a volley from outside the box. He's in front of goal. Touch. He's in front of Goldson. And he's got it. Look, look let's not get ourselves. He's got, the, he's got it in his locker. He's got a quality to do that. He's inside the 18-yard box. It's coming in at a good height. I'm quite happy with that because I think Goldson uh, switched off there. That's good from Rangers. They've outnumbered Celtic and worked it well. Kamara has done brilliantly. You can just see Tavernier arriving. Rangers looking a lot more settled. And uh, we've not seen many chances at goal. We've seen the one that, that Cholak missed. Here's Lundstrom outside the box over the bar. Great defending by Taylor there. Sees Tavernier coming at him. What does he do? Shuts that right hand side down. So Tavernier has to then come back out. Knows the danger. Lundstrom shoots over. Celtic seem to get out quite easy though, don't they, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. They always seem to have that extra man in midfield. They always seem to find a Riley or Hatati or someone just behind the lines done it again here yeah there's Hitati we know what he can do in this fixture at Celtic Park but Tillman does well to shut him down and then I'm not really sure about that from was it Greg Taylor don't know what he sees mm-hmm. there he, he just needs to keep tough, that going to Jota tough ball isn't it oh, that very in. tough uh, I mean just put that out to Jota let him run at Tavernier and you're inside the box mm. it was delicate to say the least Roger it was quite a, a flat sort of straight ball tough to pull that one off oh very much so it actually been better just pulling the trigger than shooting from there I would, I would have thought uh, rather than you know whatever it was he actually tried I don't know whether he tried to lift one into a bad at the, at the back post it certainly didn't Slack. come off but Celtic very quickly recycle the ball they're winning the yeah. midfield battle Hattati yeah. has been excellent Slack from Rangers yeah. though again they tried to work out and it not managing to to keep the ball when they've got it deep, Gordon. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Um, they've got to, they've got to keep a hold of the ball. I said earlier about Rangers with Cholak. If the ball and and occasions like this, if the ball gets played up, he's got to try and get in front of defenders and hold it up. Um, but the game's just taking a little, you know, a little breather. And, Good. And I think no, we needed no, it. Yeah. No wonder why. And I'm sure Roger got his bins emptied. That's about four times he's mentioned recycling today. Um, but um, <laughs> hey, listen, it's been a t- it's been a tough week for getting the bins emptied. Don't, let's not go of, there. Of all the topics I thought we might discuss this afternoon, my bins were not one of them. Gordon uh, Deal's thoughts on the bin strikes. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Recycling, recycling. That's all fair. That's what the, that's what the modern coaching manual yeah, tell you. I love it. I love it. I'm putting that on. Uh, Joe Hart tries to go long but falls and slices the ball out of play well better from Rangers from a pressing point of view because Celtic you can quite clearly see what they're trying to do try to you know, lure them in but keep the two midfielders wide and free but Rangers pressed them forced Joe Hart to kick it long and they win a throw in just at halfway line but the game has taken a wee bit of a lull at the minute but I'd like to see you so in, your, in your day on the touchline wearing that wee sort of suede jacket or whatever it is that Giovanni Van Bronckhorst I think you could have pulled uh, that, yeah, pulled yeah, that yeah, off I've no, <laughs> seen you in the big baggy suits yeah. big huge that was the style of that when I was leading teams out of Hamden in the cup final um, I think you would have oh. dressed better for it oh there's a gr- oh. it's ve- That's like, uh, S- strangely slack from Carl Starfield I don't think he needed to head it he was under no pressure and he heads it straight back to Cholak who then tries to lob Joe Hart from about 45 yards and it goes wide. What's, what's Starfield thinking? It, it's just the atmosphere in these games. You can't hear someone 10 yards away. Now, I've no doubt in my mind that Joe Hart would have shouted mm-hmm. there, but he just can't hear him. And he's he's worried about someone in behind. But a mistake, nonetheless. Probably, is it Joe Hart had the lob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably should have yeah. done better. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think he could have. But it's, it's a difficult technique for him there. But he's he's quite right to have a go, but uh, a sure bit of slackness. John Lundstrom gets caught offside from a, a yeah. kick out by John McLaughlin, but there we are. What a pass that is from Matt O'Reilly. Celtic are in again, and it's a wonderful finish. Oh Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Rangers are looking for the flag. It does not go up, and it is wonderful from Jota. The pass from Matt O'Reilly, every bit is good. The touch from Jota, the dinked finish with the right foot over John McLaughlin. It is as good as we'll see all afternoon, and with 32 minutes on the clock, it has Celtic 2, Rangers 0 on that scoreboard. Well, I don't think you'll see a, a better goal in the full of the UK this uh, today because it's an outstanding pass from O'Reilly left footed Jota times he's run to perfection Tavernier probably just playing him on side with his hand up but it's all about the finish six yards out on the angle thanks over McLaughlin 2-0 it's hard hard a long way back for Rangers see for me there you have a look at the way Celtic put that ball back into play it's so quick Rangers players have switched off but I'll say something you're talking about goals that touch 
was brilliant. He invites a goalkeeper. <sighs> Roger, that, I don't, that is quality. I don't know where to start. You see the touch, the finish, the pass. Then the, go even further back. The speed of thought to, to get it up and running. But everything about that, from a Celtic perspective, was brilliant. In terms of speed of thought. Celtic are miles ahead of Rangers this afternoon Celtic have scored two goals Leila Bada and Jota inside the first 33 minutes and the Rangers defence have been sleeping for both goals now when we go to the open line this afternoon every Celtic player in the land will say Jota was onside every Celtic fan I should say every Rangers fan in the land will say Jota was offside but it doesn't take away from the fact that it was a wonderfully crafted goal by Celtic and the Rangers defence as we've said from the start the back four and John McLaughlin are sleeping I mean, Mark, to try and paint the picture, since that's what we're all about on the radio, is Matt O'Reilly's coming in from the right-hand side, but he hits the pass left-footed. So it has to... And Tillman's gone into the book, by the way. It has to be perfect. You know, it's, it's not a cross. It's a fired ball with a yeah with a left foot. And it's perfect for Jota, but his touch is <sighs> immaculate but as well. You just said the word there. Everything about it was perfect. Because the weight of the pass has to be there. You know, the run has to be timed to perfection, but the touch to kill that... And then the finish I mean you see players run through One and one with a goalkeeper square on And dink the goalkeeper To do it for a wide You know a Wider area And get the height on it And come back down It's a sensational goal And Rangers If you're looking at it defensively If I'm Tavernier Or Goldson there You need to track him You need to be sure That he is offside You can't just hope When you're 20 yards out And hold your hands up mm. And hope he's offside Again look I'll say it anyway This will never catch on But if we are Because we're allowed to try And be sensible and level headed I get fans you know, We'll get emotional either way That's fa- Either way Roger that, That's far too close to, to really Be able to To bank on the decision If you're Rangers It's, it's extremely oh, yeah. close We can't even tell from there uh, Absolutely Listen He may well be offside He may well be onside But if you're the Rangers Back for him you don't hang about and w- wait for the flag. You, your job is to defend that properly. And at the two Celtic goals, they haven't defended it. And we will have Rangers supporters this afternoon phoning in here saying the Rangers back four last season of Alan McGregor and goal, Tavernier, Goldson, Balligan and Bassey. This is a downgrade. What you're looking at this afternoon, you know, Bassey was at left back at times last season because he was better than Barisic. Mm-hmm. Balligan... His performances in big games have been better than James Sands. And I'm afraid Alan McGregor still looks to me to be a better goalkeeper in games like this than John McLaughlin. So Rangers fans will come on and they will argue that not enough was done by Rangers to replace Bassey, to replace Balligan, and if you're not picking Alan McGregor, to replace McGregor. I was listening to Jim before a game at Celtic Park. He was talking interestingly about the mid- Midlay Park, how would tactically with Rangers... Celtic look like they've got two, three men more in the middle of the park where Rangers do. The space, their movement, interchanging, the way they're recycling the ball is incredible. It's the just what, the, the what to the ball? Sorry, recycling it, sticking uh-huh. it in the blue bin. Yeah, um, it's been. And the minute Rangers get it, they've got two, three Celtic jerseys round about them, putting them under. That's the nice though from Rangers. It's really nice from Ryan Kent. The well, the final ball wasn't good, but luckily for him. Carl Starfield the, takes a mad swipe at it and it goes out for a throw-in. The bottom line in the first 35 minutes are Celtic's ball boys and ball girls have moved faster than the 11 Rangers players. That yeah. has been the difference. Celtic are on their toes. Everyone, I include the ball boys. The Rangers are on their heels. See, see, when you look at that goal for a wider angle, when Celtic get the free kick, it would alarm Giovanni Van Bronckhurst when he watches it. How much space O'Reilly's actually got when the ball's played him? There's no mm. one Rangers player within yeah. 10 yards of him. The, the, I'm going to break my own rule here because it reminds me of the callers that phone in and say, but I, know, I played amateur football. I've watched some amateur football this morning, Mark, and at any level, you just always hear people saying, stand on the ball, stand in front of the stand ball, in front just, of the just ball. slow it down. And, and switch on. How many times do you switch on when you get something away? Especially against a Celtic side, but Rangers, just static. But you never know. Next football goal. can flip quickly and Rangers do have a corner. Yeah, but you've not asked any questions so far. Well, it's a good header from Cholak in the sense that he did well to win it, but he can't get the direction. And it goes over the bar. It reminded me of a line from Ange Postacoglu yesterday. Roger, he said that the Rangers players, uh, the Celtic players, wouldn't get on the rides at Disneyland because they're all so small. And that's why he's added a bit of height with his uh, his deadline day signing. Yeah, um, and then the big lad isn't even on the, the bench this afternoon. But C- Celtic, they're just, you know, they're, they're not tall, they're not robust. As you say, they don't have, you know, 
big oh, physical Celtic have got up the pitch. In the Sorry, Roger. But Celtic, Celtic are up the pitch very easily here and into the box, but it's cut out. I think I think that. Rangers have got to look at the right hand side. See Tillman, he just he looks out sorts for me down there. That was uh, alarming there. It was jogging. Wow, that was so easy, wasn't it? He yeah. was jogging back, and Taylor just sprinted off the back of him. Pretty easy. But He's great going forward. Hold on though, and now here come Rangers. It was good strength from Tavernier. Jackie Macis felt it was uh, unfair the, the challenge, but it was good strength from the Rangers captain at the same time, and it allowed Rangers to come forward, throw in Barisic down at the corner. Yeah, much better there from Barisic actually squaring Juranovic up 1v1, but he actually does well to defend that. I mean, it is end to end. There's another wicked Barisic ball. delivery, though, and this one comes off. Uh, well, I thought it was off a Celtic player for no, a corner. I think he came off Tillman last. Yeah. And Taylor got a touch onto Tillman. See if your Barisic is a full back, Mark. You, you, can, you, can't, you can't, as a centre forward, you can't ask for any better in deliveries than that. They're absolutely brilliant balls. Two things, I think Celtic are covering it well, but Rangers need to try and get on the end to something, capitalise, because they need the next goal. If it goes three, then it's good night, we can go home, but 2-1. Celtic are into confidence. the box again, it's flashed across, and there are no takers. Jack and Marcus, it probably was a shot, but it almost turned into a pass for Jota at the back post, and he almost got on the end of it. Celtic are getting to those positions so easily Mark yeah and I it's think it strange. was Riley sorry coming in or Jota it's strange to watch because you look at Rangers away from home against PSV and you look at the way that the defended and everything was so solid but it just seems the opposite space is everywhere Hatate, O'Reilly McGregor just all the time in the world on the ball and even that Jacques is just peels off Sands here and it's easy and I think Rangers it, I think I, are getting away with I think the yeah, two no. Rangers centre halves are struggling a little bit they're, they're not working with each other it's leaving Golson's dropping off um, you know and then all of a sudden the space is in oh, between Celtic, Sands. Celtic are in again here this is men flooding forward Jota step over saved by McLaughlin but there's a lot of defending to be done for Rangers and that will be a real concern for the, the manager they can't cope with the Celtic press the Celtic press is too strong it's too quick there's too many people involved in it Golson and Sands they're off having Oh, we've got another goal at Celtic Park. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. It's like last season all over again. 39 minutes on the clock. It's Celtic 3, Rangers 0. And it's Lille Abada. We just praised John McLaughlin for the save. It comes to Abada again. Lashes at right footed. Seem to go through the Rangers goalkeeper. And it's Celtic 3 0 up with 40 minutes on that clock. Well, sensational stuff. Again, it's the speed that Celtic, you know, get possession. The throw in. Rangers just not <laughs> reacting at all. It's. Amazing to watch. I mean, Taylor just off the back of Tillman. He doesn't even flash a good cross across, but it finds its way to a bad at the back post and he tucks it away. You've got to ask, look at Barisic. He runs right across the. Where, the, where, where is Barisic he in runs all that? To the six yard box. He runs right to the, the other front post. post. Front post. Front post. Look where Barisic is. Oh my. It's incredible defending. Do you know something? Through John McLaughlin's legs. Yeah, but I get back to something the Rangers manager said the last time this happened. We turned up at Celtic Park, we weren't ready, right? It's the same today. I can't believe it. Celtic are absolutely destroying this Rangers. We, we, say, we say that within minutes of the kickoff, the Rangers defence are all over the place. It's been proved before, last season, Barisic was left out of the team because he can't cope in games like this. James Sands, for me, isn't a centre half. He's been pushed into it because of the injuries to Suter and to Davis and to Hillander, all still out. That's Nobody knows be... when they're coming back. And it, I'm afraid, again, I, I'm not going to say Alan McGregor's going to save that. But Alan McGregor, if you're watching the game, and Giovanni van Bronckhorst will contest this, I think Rangers fans have more confidence if Alan McGregor's in goal. And Rangers, as a team, look to have more confidence. Mm if Alan McGregor's in goal and Celtic are taking Rangers to the cleaners I'm sometimes a bit sympathetic to goalies in those instances Mark they have they're set to save a shot their feet probably shoulder width apart and someone blasts it very quickly through their legs it makes you look foolish mm. is, is, it a, is that a mistake? I, I still think he should do better I think he can I'm no goalie expert but just looking at that the first goal and that goal perhaps he could do better but I'm not going to pin that one to go because you could probably pin it in the full back four in the midfield in front of him. Tillman's reaction when Celtic get the throw in is, is a joke. And even then when Taylor gets the ball in behind him, he still ambles back. 
Then the defender, every <laughs> bar sits your right does. I've no idea you've, why he's in there. You've played in this fixture not too long ago. Is this where the the psychology of it actually is, is really important, Mark? Because see, surely after the first and certainly after the second, surely above all else, the Rangers players are thinking, right, switch on. You know, we, we need to at least yeah. react quickly. If the ball goes out or if it's a throw-in, the first thing we need to do is be ready but it seems like they're regressing in that regard well it's about in-game management you're right and the experienced Rangers have got on the pitch to say look it's 2-0 we're getting absolutely tore to pieces here let's just be compact let's get everybody switched on get it at half time the manager might change something if anything they're getting pulled wider apart oh, they're, they're failing from... to run back they're, oh, they're really all good, over the place really good from Ryan Kent he's been Rangers best player for sure mm -hmm. uh, and the advantage was given to Rangers the, yeah, they're going to get it back for the advantage I think we'll get the first Celtic booking of the afternoon as well Whoever had the first goal That Ryan Kent, was it Matt O'Reilly? It was he's, someone in he's there He's been the only shining light He's been good, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah Carter but, Vickers, but I've got to say Rangers are chasing shadows in the middle of the pitch They're all over the place um, you've, You'll need to make substitutions at half-time Of that, there's no doubt but Tillman, I for mean, instance it's, is it's, ugly, it's ugly for Rangers already, Roger But this could be Anything at this rate Yeah I think they, they need to get in And Giovanni Van Bronckhorst Needs to reorganise Because what's happening just now Is not working They are being absolutely bossed uh, they, they just can't handle Celtic Pressing them so quickly And in so many numbers Nine times out of ten When Rangers play When Goldson and Sands Get the ball The other team drops off And they, they let Goldson and Sands Play it into the, the midfield pivot Whether it's Lundstrom or Davis Or whoever Then They turn and they try and link the play Celtic aren't allowing them to do it. Celtic, you saw it a second ago with, with Giacomakis, right on top of the first Rangers player, and Rangers don't know how to cope with it. Is that the difference with this Celtic team, Mark? Because we've watched how, how many of these fixtures over the years, and I reckon, in a lot of them, in years gone by, if one team goes 2-0 up before half-time, your priority becomes to get in 2-0 up at half-time, not give anything away. Yeah. Celtic's priority is to score a third, and actually at the moment they're probably still looking for a fourth. Yeah, they're ruthless. It's the manager's... You know what he's brought to Celtic. He doesn't accept taking the foot off the pedal. Celtic were probably guilty of that back in was it February, but I just kind of see them letting up. The way they've started this season, you think about last Sunday what happened. You think about midweek the way that the reserves came in and played. Followed by this, it's as impressive as I've seen at the start of a season. They were only two 0 up at this stage at Tannadice. Oh, were they? <laughs> yeah. Steady. Jack Ross watching. I know how you feel, Gio. He mm. says from the comfort of his couch um, Two minutes to be added on then At the end of this half Yeah it's going to be a very interesting um, Team talk from the Rangers manager That's and good though changes. Hold on. Ranger, I thought Rangers had got into a good area and They have but they've had to come back out the way And, and almost start again Barisic's crossing has been really good And this one's hacked into the air This could cause a bit of bother Joe Hart has to come and, and punch like it that. And there's going to be a shot from the edge of the box And I think it's Joe Hart's first save Yeah and it's one that, that you would have made, Roger, probably. I think you've taken that too far, but I, know, I, I appreciate <laughs> the point you're making. Shot from Stephen Davis from 25 yards, and Joe Hart down to his left and, and held it easily. Got to say, Barisic, is, as much as I was saying, he defensively put, going forward, like right. I said, he has right. put, I think, four great crosses. Mm -hmm. That might have been one of his best ones. And he had a great area in front of Carter Vickers, but no Rangers player mm. attacking the space. Is that enough, right? I know, I know the modern fullback is always... Judge now on attacking But is it enough? Rangers are 3-0 down and, no. and, and a lot of that's to do with what's happening at the other end yeah. no, no, never for me I'll never be one of these Well, they're attackers I think you always got to do your job first At the back post He's failed that But there's one plus side It has been his delivery He needs somebody to go and attack that though uh, 30 seconds left really Of the time added on It is a minimum So you never know Sometimes we do run uh, beyond Just ask the Newcastle fans from midweek uh, and there is a bit of space opening up for Rangers if they could look to try and strike something back at the end of this first half Tillman works it to Kamara and Kent's there and he has been a shining light here's another of those Barisic crosses and it falls the way of Celtic who scramble it clear yeah he's the biggest danger down that left hand side he's, he's working well with Kent it's the only sort of a danger Rangers have got to offer uh, caused a little bit of panic there as a half time, half -time at Celtic Park Andrew McLean and Jim Duffy Celtic 3 Rangers nil. the half time score here at Celtic Park a frantic, frantic opening 45 minutes for Ange Postacoglu's side have once again been at their flowing best and have a big big lead 
at the break. There was concern for Celtic less than a minute on the clock. Kyogo with an injured shoulder after a collision with John Lundstrom. He was forced off with Giacomakis coming on. You wondered whether that would disrupt their rhythm. Absolutely not. Eight minutes in, they took a quick throw in. Jota with a low cross, first time into the box. And there was Leela Bada to sweep home. Question marks over John McLaughlin. He got his hand to it, but couldn't keep that one out. And it was 1-0 to Celtic. They probably should have made it two. 18 minutes in, Matt O'Reilly... Cut back onto his left foot, whip a dangerous cross into the box. Giacomakis somehow couldn't get his head on that one, let alone score. A similar chance for Rangers at the other end. Antonio Cholak, a few minutes later, he should have found the net, really. Borna Barisic, Barisic with a great delivery, but Antonio Cholak could only head wide. Just after the half-hour mark, it was more quick thinking from Celtic that doubled their lead. A quick free kick was worked to Matt O'Reilly. A wonderful through ball from him to find Jota, and the winger with a calm, quality chip finish to make it 2-0 not long before the break John McLaughlin made a save from Jota but couldn't keep Abada out moments later it was a cross from Greg Taylor it found its way through to the Israeli winger and he fired through the legs of the Rangers goalkeeper for 3-0 Celtic just quicker sharper more switched on and just better than Rangers so far in this game the half time score is Celtic 3 Rangers 0 and Jim Duffy it feels a bit like deja vu we sat here mm. in February Celtic ran riot in the first half against Rangers Rangers were shell shocked they couldn't cope with Celtic and it's exactly the same again here today. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, the tempo of Celtic playing uh, has been the biggest difference, you know, uh, in, in the sense of, uh, you know, how, how they've approached the game. Rangers, it's got to say, Danny, it's no surprise. I mean, you see Celtic every game, particularly the Celtic part, the, the, you know, the, the ball boys and girls around the pitch, they throw the ball on so quickly, any corners, they sprint to it, if they can take it quickly, they'll take it quickly, they don't wait the centre-backs coming up if they, they don't have to. All of those type of things, free kicks, if the ball it's a free kick, they're down, the hands on the ball, bang, they played it, uh, as, as the second goal showed, when again, as, as Gordon was saying there, even at a, you know, an amateur level, you, know, you, you give away a free kick, whether it's offside with Lundstrom, I think it was Ryan Kent that turned his back, you stand over the ball, particularly when you play against a Celtic who are notoriously quick at getting the play started, so all of those things I think, uh, Gianna Van Brockers will be absolutely tearing his head out because those are the elements that they can they, they can and will have discussed leading up to this game in terms of the execution the quality um, that's something that's uh, in Celtic's locker they've been magnificent all season the score goals are fun I think when uh, Kyogre went off then a lot of Celtic fans would have been biting their nails obviously Gianna Matis come on different to a player but he's put in an unbelievable shift since he come on obviously desperate to, to prove that he, he can be a, an integral part of the Celtic team which I'm sure he will do but the goals I'm not as critical in Baricic as maybe the guys in the studio up here I, I think particularly the third one I think he's actually in the right position but he's, maybe his body position is not ideal but I think but it takes a little deflection in Abada does what good strikers do which he doesn't go in on top of him he just hangs out a little bit but it's really the other ones you know quick throw-ins um, Rangers not switching on at all and I think that's during the organisation Rangers have played a 4-2-3-1 with Lundstrom and Davis sitting Kamara trying to get close to uh, McGregor as much as he possibly can it hasn't worked Tillman's been anonymous he, he just looks I mean but listen we know he's a talented young player but he just looks all out of sorts he's hardly the touch of the ball Barisic has been their only threat in terms of crossing and their only real asset has been Ryan Kent getting them up the pitch but every Celtic player is at it you know they're thriving on it as, as Ange Postecoglou says time and time again they don't stop and that has been unbelievably evident in the first 45 minutes Leila Bada with two Jota with one the half time score at Celtic Park is Celtic three Rangers nil The winning team all season long this is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Wow, what a first half at Celtic Park. The half time score from the east end of Glasgow is Celtic 3, Rangers 0. Jim Duffy has watched it in person. Uh, Roger Hannah, Mark Wilson, and Gordon Deal are in the studio. I mean, Jim, we've all sat and watched the goals back. Obviously, I'm not sure if you, if you get the privilege. It is the perfect combination for Celtic and the worst combination for Rangers of the home side being sharp and bang at it and the away side being anything but. Yeah, I mean, Roger, the guys yourself and that have said that and it's, I mean, it's no disrespect to the Rangers players but you just know the way Celtic are going to play so surely they have done, you know, we heard uh, Giovanni Van Rutgers saying before the game, he said it's the small details. Well, when you're doing it, your video analysis, you know, those details where I'm sure have been pointed out, listen, this is him at Celtic Park, 
this is how quickly they move the ball the ball boys throw the ball on bang they're away at it the first one yeah we saw it was a close call whether it could have been a come off Ryan Kent or not but either way as soon as that ball's out I mean you really would have practised that hit training you know throw a ball out say right get organised quickly sprint back into position Rangers didn't you know they almost you know they were all looking around before you know it Celtic's in behind them the ball's across the goal and it's uh, you know the, it's a goal for a badder straight away and then as I said the second one offside and down Riley the ball gets played into Riley midfield fantastic ball I mean from where I was up here in the, uh, in the stand it didn't look offside he looked as if he's bent his run but if he's a fraction again very very difficult to call and then the last one again quick throw in you know Rangers don't get enough players back I think it's uh, Taylor that gets in behind and again that's Tillman for me he's not a defensive minded player in that aspect and uh, Celtic I think had a 3v2 situation over there and then they get a little bit of luck because I think it, as I say deflects to Abada but again Abada as he's done so often we spoke about it was it the right call it was <laughs> another two goals that tells you it's the right call so fantastic um, from Celtic's point of view and obviously a couple of other chances uh, John McLaughlin's on one save his feet from Jota the header from Giamakis and other than the crosses from Baracic Rangers have had nothing and uh, you know they, they just look shell shocked to be honest with you I mean, you could pick out a number of people, Jim, but for an overall body of work from the start of the season, just how good is Jota? Oh, listen, he's phenomenal, and he's 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 a crowd pleaser. He's a, he's he's a throwback in the sense of that he's an entertainer. You know, yeah, and he still works hard. Don't get me wrong; you see him working hard, but he's an entertainer. The first thing he gets, you know, gets his head up. He does a few step overs for show sometimes, but fans love all that. And you know, and as I said, but the, the most important thing, like any anywhere, is an end product. And you know, whether it's crossing or finishing, he's finishing. His goal was delightful. I, I, I personally think John McLaughlin had done better. My, my own personal opinion, from the angle he was at, I felt he went down a little bit too easy. I think you know, you see goalkeepers come down there in that star shape, and you know, listen, it can go through his legs like the, the, the third one did. But I think Jot has got a fantastic finish, but it's really the only place he could put it. But for me, the goalkeeper stands big. He's got nowhere to go in the angle. So I, I actually think he was maybe a wee bit, he could have done a wee bit better there. But Jota's touch, he's finishing his composure. He had one earlier on, I think you mentioned it um, in the studio, where the ball was a big diagonal ball. You think it's running out, he struck a leg out, brought it down, he was a wee bit unlucky, he slipped after it. But listen, he's, he's a joy to watch, absolute joy. And I think we're so lucky to have him in Scottish football because we want to be entertained. And uh, listen, unless you're a full back against them, then, you know, as I say, th- th- these are the type of players that fans pay their season ticket to watch. How, how many of those goals should John McLaughlin do better with, Jim? I, I, think, I, I think them all, to be honest with you, yeah. I, I think the last one's harder because it's so close and goalkeepers are trying to move from one position to the other. And you see, as, as you mentioned, you see it going through the legs. I think that's harder. Sometimes you save it with their feet. But the first one, yeah, it's hit, and I know he's changing position, but I think when you get as much of a hand to that as, as he did, I think you should be saving it. And the third one for me. So for me, the first and the third are, are probably a little bit more, I'd yeah. be a little bit more critical than, than, than I would. Listen, we go on about the Alan McGregor situation. I mentioned before the game that this would be a big, <laughs> a big test for him. Um, you know, he's not, he's had one other save to make in the sense of it, but Celtic are clinical. And the amount of goals you score uh, in, in any game is sensational. Um, I mean, Jim, when we're, you know, we're talking about individual players and so on and the contribution that they've made this afternoon, it's easy to forget Celtic's number one striker and the league's top scorer went off injured after, well, got injured after 50 seconds. Yeah, yeah I mean, I listened, when I seen him get down, I thought he's, he's struggling, I said to Andrew, he's struggling. And you could tell straight away and then it comes off and you think well that, that's got to change the way Celtic play but they're that used to you know the way Ange Postecoglou plays it made no difference to them whatsoever it, you know I mean it just gave them a different a different way of playing I think Rangers should have changed because Rangers to me were, were, were defending a midline looking at them from, from the stand uh, that that I mean can I almost midline between the 18 yard line and the halfway line because of Kyogo as soon as Kyogo was taken from the pitch Rangers should, should have in my opinion went 20 yards higher up the pitch because he didn't have that same sort of threat, same type of player. Um, you know, Giamakis is going to occupy the centre backs. He's going to play up against them. Kyogo played down the sides of them in between. So for me, they should have squeezed the game 20 yards higher up, allowed the midfield to squeeze, but they didn't. They played in the same shape, which meant that Giamakis could then 
stretch the game and allow Jota, Abada and the three midfield players in particular to just link up the play. So I think that actually threw Rangers a little bit. Strangely enough, I don't think it certainly wasn't the way yeah. it's planned, but I think it threw them. Andrew McLean, any changes particularly for Rangers at the break? Yeah, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is going to make one change. Scott Wright just getting ready to come on at the moment and it will be Glenn Kamara that makes way for him. So Jim, you'd expect Scott mm. Wright to go on that right-hand side. Malik Kilman to play more central yep. and yes it gives Rangers more of an attacking threat but potentially does that leave them more open essentially yeah there's a, there's a risk because uh, I mean it gives them a little bit more pace with Scott Wright Tillman definitely getting his, his, his favourite position ahead of ahead of Davis and, uh, and, and uh, Lundstrom so they'll still play the 4-2-3-1 but Tillman should get more involved obviously Wright gives them I think that was another thing that Rangers lacked we spoke about um, and Postacoglu said about the new signing they're small but they're Celtic are dynamic you know whereas I think Rangers no disrespect to either Lundstrom, Kamara or Davis but they're not electric pace and I think as I said other than Ryan Kent who, who was terrific when he got the ball but it was all in the, kind of mid, uh, the, the, the middle club rather than the attacking club so and maybe try to have a lot of a high up the yeah there's a big risk from Rangers can they get a goal back can they get themselves some sort of foothold in the game but the more they push they, they know the Celtic team's not going to slow the game down they're going to go for more goals yeah because any threat Rangers had in that first half was down that left hand side they'll be hoping to sort of even that up as well and get James Tavernier on the ball in forward area for as well yeah I mean listen they, they, they've got to try and they don't have a huge fan uh, amount of fans here but they do have millions of fans around the world so they have to show fight and commitment but as I said I've said this many many times Celtic will not take their foot off the gas they will be hungry for more yeah Matt O'Reilly has set us underway for the second half Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Canvas Lang Showroom now open to the public. Uh, just a quick one before we go any further. How's the predictions looking, Roger and Gordon? Well, I'm going. I'm going up front here and saying right. I've fallen flat on my face, but the positive, I'm still moving forward. If you think <laughs> about it, <laughs> Matt, I don't know what I that means. Think uh, about that, uh, but uh, any defence? No, absolutely no, like not. Like Rangers, none whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got, Matt? 3-1. Oh, oh Matt, are you hoping you're, for a, a Rangers goal here then? Certainly not. Yeah. You're, you're not getting that either. <laughs> Foot, football I'll moves on quickly. Go my now, prediction. Th- this game is over, but the next games for these two clubs are huge. Celtic will take enormous confidence from this display going into an enormous game against Real Madrid at Celtic Park on Tuesday night. The flip side of that is... If you look how fragile this Rangers defence has been this afternoon, four of Rangers' next six games, away to Ajax, away to Aberdeen, away to Hearts, away to Liverpool, and throw in a home game against Napoli and among that as well. If Rangers perform like this in those games, goodness knows what might happen. Well, they've pressed for early from the start and they forced Celtic into a mistake, but John Lundstrom just t- trying to keep the ball. Uh, here's where we find Mark if there are similarities with the game in February Celtic were like this and the scoreline was exactly like this at half time in the second half Celtic didn't add to it and Rangers were the better team yes you would accept maybe because Celtic didn't need to be um, but, but the second half sort of just, just played out and, and Celtic won the game 3-0 so we'll find yeah. out if it's a similar story today or if Rangers can get back in or if Celtic put the foot down yeah very similar because it- Am I right in saying Did Kamara come off that day For Ryan Jack I think you might be yeah, right Jack I certainly came on I think he did yeah. Jack came on Made a difference Rangers were much better Celtic just eased off the gas I've got a funny feeling Ange Postogoglu Won't want a repeat of that I think he'll want This Celtic team To keep this intensity up Especially this early in the season you Remember it was a different Time of the season Just off of the winter break You could see maybe Saving legs I think Celtic need to keep at it for what's coming at them on Tuesday night surely though surely though if they're three up there must be a time in the game where Ange does have a Real Madrid half a mind. glance to yeah. Real Madrid why would you run your star players into the ground in a game that's already been won when well, you do, you've, he, you've got Real on Wednesday he doesn't night have to, he, he's, uh, that's okay he doesn't have to uh, Roger because He's got quality in the bench. That's what I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, he, he can bring on the quality he's got in the bench and still keep the yeah, pace of the game. You saw that, at, yeah, you saw that at Tannadice last week as well. You know, I think Celtic, Celtic five up, and you look to the, the bench, on came Forrest, on came Turnbull, on came, I think it was 
Maeda came on at that stage mm-hmm. as well. He does have a frightening strength and depth that actually at the minute I don't think Rangers can match. Uh, so that change at the break, what do we make of that, Glenn Kamara, for Scott Wright this time? I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised Tillman stayed on the pitch as well. I think he's been caught up in the game. I agree with Jim. I think he has a terrific talent. He's a good start to his Rangers career, but he's not influenced the game. I, I, we, we discussed it. I don't like him out in that. I like him in a little bit. It'll be interesting to see if he can get on the ball um, in the second half. But Kamara offered absolutely nothing. But he wasn't the only one, Gordon. He got caught up with most of the Rangers players. I think Kent Barisic down the left-hand side at times looked effective. But apart from that, I don't think Rangers have had a player he could really give pass marks. Rangers just put in another cross mark that, that Celtic defended. Is it an underrated part of Celtic's team, the way they actually, and hold on because they're going to have to do it again, uh, defend is it an underrated part of the Celtic team the way they defend those cross yeah. balls I think when you look back to Ibrox in the second half there where uh, they defended cross after cross and even at times Jakimakis was back and defending in the box they are much stronger than they have been seasons gone by now the face maybe half a dozen maybe more crosses another one coming here and they look pretty comfortable they never look to be scrambling maybe Starfelt just had a a slash at one That's earlier. better because John Lundstrom's dispossessed Rio Hitati is on the edge of the box but the shot is blocked and away it goes that's what Rangers need to do to Celtic's press Roger isn't it? Yeah very much so they, they need to match fire with fire if you like Lundstrom is right on top of it oh, quick as a flash Celtic are into the box and it oh, goes behind yeah. Giacomakis what and, a ball that was and that's Hitati. going to be the balance if Rangers are going to push forward and try and get something even if it's just a bit of pride out this game they're going to leave themselves open to that kind of Celtic break. Scott Wright's taken a sore one. I think it was just a bit too aggressive for Nick Walsh's liking. I think it's just a different threat from Celtic with Scott Wright up against Taylor. I think Tillman, he looks a fantastic find, but I'm with Daz, I think, in a more central area. And you'll get away with playing Tillman there against other teams in the league because you get so much of the ball and you don't really need to run back. But I think we're right out there it kind of pins Taylor back a wee bit and Rangers have started this second half much better than anything they, they've done in the first half that's for sure well I think I think the manager will be looking for a massive response so he's uh, we've said it from the the first whistle the way Celtic get the ball play the the, the pace the, the even when it goes out of the pit, out the park Gordon they've got the ball in within seconds they're on the move Rangers had switched off so it'll be interesting to see how Rangers develop but I still think there's more goals I think the Rangers will push forward and I just think the quality Celtic have got and the mood that they're in I think they'll catch Rangers out again When Tom Lawrence was out to say we spoke at the top of the show that it allowed Rangers to add to the midfield Stephen Davis came in with Kamara and Lundstrom and we thought they would go toe-to-toe with the Celtic three they haven't got anywhere near the Celtic three I know Yuri's a big fan but Scott Arfield Ryan Jack as well does are they better suited to this fixture than maybe a, a Glenn Kamara is it's very hard to say that Roger because I just think that the credit must go to the way Celtic have went about it you know the, the, their energy levels are incredible um, the pace that they've got all around the pitch they're comfortable on the ball they've got some fantastic footballers they just seem to work into this system especially in the middle of the park you look at our Celtic Rangers game and you know how tight it's going to be. But these Celtic players look like they've got acres of room the way their movement and their rotations are. Just and looking it, at the Rangers players, just complaining all the time. I think Goldson's there having a go, saying that that should have been a foul on them. But, you know, complaining about the throwing, complaining to each other who should follow runs. You know, they've lost sight of what they've been so good at over, over the years, especially away from home. And inevitably Jota because of the goal and Abada because of his two will take the headlines Hatati and O'Reilly have been absolutely yeah. terrific in the middle of the yeah. park two January signings by Ange Postacoglu and again a, a bit like Haksabanovic and Abelgard just now people were saying oh well you know McGregor's there and Turnbull's there in the midfield is looking okay why is he signing these guys and if you remember we thought Hatati was coming over as a backup left back at one stage yeah. I and, th- and I th- Ange said no no they're in, they're in the team and they've been immense I think he's one of the most gifted players that I've seen for a long while uh, O'Reilly you know when he came at Celtic at first year thinking I wonder if he'll just be a squad he's been absolutely brilliant I love watching the way he's such an intelligent midfield player. Carter Vickers is trying to get back. I suspect there will be a Celtic player who at least gets a, 
a talking to from the ref this is quite a good advantage that he's played uh, but Cholak is crowded out and Celtic come away with it I can't even remember who took a sore one it seems like a while ago I think yeah. it was Tillman Starfield yeah, it was coming Tillman. in right through him there and I, I suspect he will get a booting because he was so late do you know I, I, I'm watching Cholak centre forward take the ball there and he waited and waited and waited and I'm thinking where's the support where's it, where is the desire from the Rangers players to go up there and support and try and help the lad out 100% it was 100%. incredible I couldn't believe and that he, did well. he took the ball in well he controlled it well he held it well he protected it yeah, and then he support. just got outnumbered because there was nobody near him Jota's gone down holding, holding his face uh, so comes under the category of head knock I think he just yeah. hit off oh, Conor yeah. Goldson's shoulder. Yeah. Be interesting. There, there, there were big questions asked of the Rangers manager after the game, Gordon. But I think he needs to be asked, you know, where is John Souter? When's he back? Where is Ben Davis? When's he back? Um, I think he got asked some of them yesterday. Now, what? Rangers don't tend to do press conferences every week at the moment, do they? But they, I think he got asked that one yesterday. Um, did he say Davis not too far, Souter a bit longer term? I know that's quite vague, but... Yeah, but I think the supporters will demand to know the answers to this. Morelos, I, I, I doubt we'll get a glimpse of him this afternoon, but you know, the Rangers at the minute cannot afford to have so many players out of the team. I think Philip Alander and Kamar Roof are not even in the Champions League squad. They're so far away from it. You know, they still miss the craft of Yanis Hadji. There are a lot of Rangers players out, and I think for me it makes it all the more baffling that they were inactive in transfer deadline day. You look at the Celtic bench, the strength of the Celtic bench, the players who aren't even on the bench. Abel Garda was paraded in front of the Celtic support at half-time. Burnaby isn't even on the bench today. There's no McCarthy or any Gucci on the bench today. These are the Celtic players not even stripped for action. Rangers bench, no disrespect to them, but includes you know young lads like Leon King, like Adam Devine. It includes Morelos, even though everyone will agree he's not 100% fit. Rangers to me just needed more players for the fixtures that are coming up I'm not sure I can burst the Celtics fans bubble if there was a slight downside to today Gordon is Kyogo went off injured and it looks like Starfelt might join him like just with Tuesday in mind they've got a big squad they'll be delighted with what's happening today um, but you'd rather still get through this unscathed if you were Ange yeah, Postecoglou yeah 100% I think Kyogo will be the, the worrying one for them um, Starfelt I thought he was very uh, lucky not to take a yellow card there I thought he, he mistimed that tackle Hurt himself But it'll be interesting to see If You know Postacoglu decides to Make that substitution Because Let's face it They're very comfortable They're three up And uh, Playing well So uh, There's no need to risk Your star players Yeah Mark How did Carl Starfield Not get a booking? <laughs> it's incredible Because he takes a huge swipe At Tillman Misses Catches ball Tillman Tillman's, on the top of the field yeah, isn't he? he should have been booked And he's struggling A bit I wonder I wonder if that will be a worry um, for Tuesday. <coughs> he's been a wee bit. He's been a wee bit rash at times. Starfield. He's been the only one. Yeah, he's coming off just now. Yeah, Jens. Mm, I like this guy. I like this guy. I think he's Moritz Jens. Jens. I think he's got a lot to offer. Um, it'll take time to settle in. But what I've seen of him so far, Gordon, I think he'll do okay for Celtic. I get Roger just. Nothing against the guys that have come on, it's just not ideal. Ange Postacoglu wouldn't have wanted to be no, forced it's a, into two it, changes. It's a worry. Starfeld has had um, injury problems stemming back to that hamstring injury for Sweden at the end of last season. Missed a lot of the pre season, took him a while to come back. That's why Jens was one of the reasons Jens was signed. Jens has been impressive so far, and not just with his goal scoring, which has caught the eye, you know, defending in there alongside Carter Vickers. Um, so, you know, losing Kyogo early. Losing Starfield early in the second half With Real Madrid coming into town at the start of the week It's a setback Rangers are about to turn to Alfredo Morelos To rescue something out of this game Whether it is just a bit of pride or something more tangible He and Scott Arfield look like they're about to come on We've not seen Alfredo Morelos since that red card at Easter Road There was the high profile mm -hmm. dropping from the squad ahead of Europe And it looks like of all places he will be welcomed back with open arms, I'm sure, at Celtic yeah, Park. Yeah, you just wonder if it's a straight swap. Oh my goodness, that might be the one of the passes of the day from Rio Hatati. Um, Barisic eventually yeah. does recover. Will it be a straight swap from Cholak, obviously? He's been quiet, he's hasn't been, he? Yeah, but to be fair to the lad, he's not had a great deal of service. What about the cross from Barisic that he should have headed that down from one, six yards? That was the one shining light he should have probably oh Juranovic is into the box it's bobbling around everywhere to be fair to Rangers they've got men back in numbers um, but they can't 
fully clear it, but the chance goes a begging for Celtic. Mm. Yeah, it was at Callum McGregor, it was at Juranovic, oh, yeah, just, just zigzagging in and out. John McLaughlin comes and takes that cross, bowls it out, tries to get Rangers going. Well, but if you're Van Bronckhorst, I mean, what have you got to lose? I, I mean, you may as well stick on a guy who... You think you'll take Davis and Cholak, or uh, Cholak and Tillman? I wonder if it's the two debutants, Cholak and Tillman, because they haven't affected the game. Tillman, at Tillman no, definitely. so quiet, yeah. hasn't he? I, I, the alarming thing for Tillman is that just his lack of interest running back, even for a central position, he just does not look interested in defending. And when you're in this sort of environment, you need to give everything to your team. It's alright going one way and creativity, but as a man down, going he, back. He's a sort of a. He's, I'm looking at him and you're thinking he's. He's probably thinking yourself. I'd be quite happy to come off yeah. here now, but just to get myself. <laughs> the thing that's strange road. about it though, did they not get? Praise for pressing against PSV. Look at what he did to to produce a V goal that sent Rangers to the Champions League group stages. These yeah, guys, oh, he nicked it pretty well. But so, what's that? The, is that the occasion getting to you, or why did he decide? Well, these to are different. Not do that today. These are different games. A hundred percent. That's what I mean. So yeah. that's the occasion. Got yeah, but well, my personal opinion, yeah, because I think the boy's a good player, but I think he's just been caught up with the Ooh. pace and everything that Celtic yeah, have played. He's, he's known nothing but success and goals and enjoyment since he's been in his Rangers career and you're not going to have that all the time sometimes you're going to have to put your shoulder to the wheel and work and press and help out your teammates and go backwards towards yep, your own yeah. goal and do the well, dirty side of it and he hasn't looked adept at it it won't be today because he has gone off as predicted um, and it is yeah Cholak and Tillman off Morelos and Arfield on Arfield on it could be 3-3 by the end of the afternoon you love this guy don't yeah, you yeah yeah he's good I, I just uh, there's players in Scottish football that I'll really take to his one well Morelos it's, it's got to be a big test for him again he came on against Hibs a couple of weeks ago and we said it's a big test for him he can't get caught up in things and he was off within a couple of minutes you'd got to say this is probably a bigger test for him 3-0 down at a hostile environment where the fans are going to be on your back Van Bronckhurst has to get something positive of him in these remaining 30 minutes. Yeah, he's got two goals against Celtic, one of which was an equaliser at Celtic Park. Um, back in 2021, Il Yunusi put Celtic in front, Morelos equalised. His other one was in a convincing win for Rangers at Ibrox. I mean, Roger, this is not any consolation to the Rangers fans. They, they want something from, from today, but if that is gone... Surely the very least they'll be hoping for is a sign that Morelos is back or you know, can, can contribute in a meaningful way soon. If he can go on and put in a really good performance for half an hour, even if it's not enough to get them you know, a result today, it might be some tiny, tiny consolation. Well, he's, he's had the olive branch extended to him by Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. He was left behind when Rangers went to Eindhoven and beat PSV to reach the Champions League group stage. And it was noticeable that night, amid the celebrations... The Van Broncos pointed out, you know, Morelos is qualified too. And that was the first sign that he was going to sort of embrace him back into the fold. He's spoken well of him since. He's talked about the meetings that they've had and the fact that Morelos has shown a desire and a determination to come back. But that's words. Rangers fans aren't interested in words from Alfredo Morelos. They're interested in actions. Plus the fact, Roger, I get some, let's not be kidding, he needs game time. And I get some a good 30 plus minutes under his belt. Here comes Celtic, edge of the box. It's just, it's all, is that at 3 0 mark, is that the risk they become too intricate? Because Hitati scored from outside the box. Yeah. You know, in this fixture, he, he's got that in his locker. He's only about 19 yards out and it opens up. But he tried to chop back, then play this little intricate pass through. Yeah, you fancy him shooting there. He's certainly got it in his locker. But just again, the speed at Celtic thinking from a throw in and how much Rangers switch off. All the Rangers players just ran towards their own goal and left their island Hitati. The, the freedom in the middle of the pitch. I'm sure Postacoglu Posta must be... I know that obviously he was forced into the early one, but he must be looking now at his bench to, to freshen this up again, um, get players on. It's very slack again from Rangers though they, they can't get out Celtic's press works and, and they work it into an attacking area I mean look Roger it's not quite been the same it's not been blistering Celtic Rangers aren't as off it but at the same time we've still not really seen Joe Hart we've, you know, we've not seen any meaningful attacks from, from Rangers as such No, Celtic look comfortable even when Rangers push forward as they are just now with Scott Wright Celtic have looked comfortable in, the, in their defensive work again ball clear just as Scott Arfield goes to the near post Celtic look <laughs> Oh, it's wonderful from Jota. 
<laughs> absolutely skips away from James Tavernier as if he's not there and uh, then takes a late one from the Rangers cap. That will get that'll be cheered like a Celtic goal, Mark, that yeah. that piece of skill from Jota and the subsequent reaction from James Tavernier. Yeah, James Tavernier's obviously had enough of him and thought, yeah. I'll, I'll leave something on him here. It's, he was always going to have one, not He's been sensational for Celtic since he's came and there's no let up. He seems to be getting better, if anything. Always say this about him that he's not just deflects and tricks, it's the end product that Jota brings, assists in goals and he's been at the forefront of everything good for Celtic this afternoon. How, how do Rangers, Mark, recover a five-point deficit on this Celtic team? Well, you look for a, you'd look for a monumental collapse from Celtic because this looks like it's getting better week after week. Mm. I think the that's, maybe got. that's why Rio Hitati should have passed it instead of <laughs> shot from out, shoot from outside the box because he's just tried it and it was um, <laughs> not a classic. I, I think he's been watching left. your DVD, I Mark Wilson. I, 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 I'm, I'm not just saying it because he shot. I, I've been watching him the last five ten minutes. I think he'll be the next substitution because he's starting to give tired balls away if you know what I mean he's usually brilliant sharp knows the pass energy the amount of work the boys put in I think that he's got to be looking at his middle part because the middle part for the first especially 45 minutes were outstanding and the the, the, the yards yeah. he must have covered that, that was all, that's always been the David Turnbull change I wonder if Aaron Moy might just be Ahead of that, uh, after well, last week, I think they've only got one substitution window left, don't they? Mm, because it had yeah, to use two and two yep, injuries. Yep. So did he? Did he make a triple change? And would you make a triple change with twenty-five minutes to go in case someone else gets injured? I think these guys might have to go for another ten or fifteen before he makes a change. Just looking at the Celtic side, I mean, Jota and Abad obviously get the headlines, but uh, I mean, McGregor, Cal McGregor again today, very quiet, you would say, in going forward, but defensively, seeing the amount of crosses that's come into the box and he's in the right place just to sweep things up. And you remember that was a concern, Celtic fans saying Rangers midfield, more physical, bullied Celtic in the middle of the pitch. It's been the they an end of the scale this afternoon. This, is, this will be known as the day, Gordon, the Ange ball morphed into multi ball. Because even just a second ago, at 3 0 up after 65 minutes, a cross from James Tavernier drifts out the park. Ordinarily, a team 3 0 up wouldn't be in any hurry to get the game going again. But the ball boy very quickly ignored the first ball, he had a second ball ready, gave it to Joe Hart, the play starts again, and Celtic go again. I'll be fascinated to hear Andrew McLean asking Ange Postacoglu after the game. What's been said to the ball boys, and mm. do they get a win bonus? They do, yeah. They, they always do this, though, don't they? But it does never feel like that, never at this pace, Gordon. Never. At no, this pace, I would no. agree with Roger. Never this is this is a step up again. It's amazing how that's become a thing now. And the ball in play time. I mean, even it's when I was playing, it, it yeah. was nothing. I, I hadn't even heard it when I played. But now, when people analyse on TV and Ange Postecoglou came in, it's a big thing and, in and, the game. And this is why it shouldn't be overlooked. See when Celtic go to. For Park or McDermott Park or Paisley They don't have that many ball boys And you're not the home no. team And you, ca you can't make it happen 100%. So that, that, that's why it is more of a challenge Because Ange Postacoglu's side is built on this Having, can we have the ball in play For 70 of the 90 minutes or whatever Because it gives us more chance of doing something with it So if you wonder why other teams Don't want that to be the case Then it should be a fairly simple answer uh, here comes Celtic again into the box But this one is cut out by James Sands They're trying to be a wee bit too intricate In this second yeah, half in the box Yeah, yeah, a badder there Opened up for him And you fancied a shot But he just tried to feed it in To Giamakis So it's, it's remarkable how this second half Has mirrored really What happened back mm -hmm. in February mm -hmm. This might be even more comfortable for Celtic though, no? I mean, yeah. meant to dry, I, don't, I can't remember what minute Ryan Jack hit the bar um, And there was a, a couple of flurries But I don't really seen much in fact, if anything, Rangers had bet, although they were, uh, there's a curler right at John McLaughlin, although Rangers, um, you know, got battered that first half, they actually had better chances, yeah. if you think of the crosses that Barisic put in. Yeah, yeah no, they certainly did, yeah. 3-0 is an adequate reflection of the way the game's gone, Gordon. I think it's fair to say. In the wee derby, Everton have just taken the lead, 1-0 oh. against Liverpool. Scotland captain Andy Robertson left on the bench, he's been brought on, and Everton have scored Connor Cody, boyhood Liverpool fan, is he? Um, oh, he's got to be offside. Or maybe it's. Mm. I, don't know, I think that might be coming back. Yeah, I think yeah. you might be right. And maybe it's not him at all, actually. I just thought. It... Anyway. Like yeah, said, forget that. We don't talk we about derby. English football. We've got a great game of football in front of us yeah. here. I yeah. wish yeah. it would brighten up a wee bit. I'm getting bored. <laughs> I was so goals not enough for you. 45 minutes was electrifying. I was so excited. This has went down to a 
You could, you could nip out and do producer Callum's recycling, does. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell, I'll tell you what, while we're talking about big and wee derbies, the Super Scoreboard derby this afternoon, Motherwell oh, Dundee so United. Is, yeah. It's you and I against producer oh. Callum. Oh. And Wilson. I don't oh, forget he's me, a kiddie on Dundee United fan. Oh, Hannah Rice legend. Dundee United, great. He never lost 9 0. There's Morelos in the box, cross falls to him. Celtic muscle him and Scott right That's out of the way. That's a chance. Easily. That's a chance for me. Yeah, maybe you know, a wee bit sharper. Morelos yeah. there would have taken that down and got a shot off. And there's Rangers in the box again. Again, the cut back is well defended. Gordon, you made a great point. Celtic's defence used to come in for such criticism. They're, they're yeah. very good at defending the ball from wide areas. Carter Vickers is one of the best going about for me. I voted for him for my player of the year last year. I thought he was terrific. Um, he's such a, such a big player for Celtic. Yep, you're right. Uh, I mean... I think they, they allow teams to cross the ball into the box. I think they're comfortable defending the width of their goal. It's certainly a tactic. You don't see Juranovic or Taylor on the other side getting dragged out. So, you know, you've got much more bodies in there to defend and it certainly works and it does get overlooked because Celtic are so good going forward. But everything's built on a solid foundation. You're right. The wee derby, Liverpool's goal no, no. remains intact. Everton's been taken, taken back after VAR. Turnbull, Moy and Maeda all coming on for Celtic. Not yeah. surprised, it's yeah. not a bad uh, trio to bring on. Yeah, there's a wee bit of harsh in Morello there. Morello As you say, though, just on the sub though, Roger, that means Celtic can't get anyone injured in the last 20 minutes of the game. No, but listen, that, that, that is the, that's the gamble you take. At the time, as you've used all five substitutions for the 70-minute mark, eh, I can understand why he's making the change to try and get some of those offensive players a little rest because... Um, they will have to work just as hard and probably a little bit harder when Real Madrid come to town. Good ball, that. Well, he's, he's, a he's in. He's in behind. He's going to flash one across mm. goal. It's not a terrible effort, you know, but it goes. He sort of drags it wide of the post. He was on a tough. Uh, a t- oh. Oh. No. oh. No, no, no. Hold on. Surely not. He's oh. inside the box, was he? He's anyway, our field inside the box. No, because it was. It didn't go, did it? Did it go? Oh, yes, it doesn't did. Ha- doesn't have to. I think that's a chance missed by Rangers. Hold on. Joe Hart's tried to play out really quickly. Ah, oh, yeah, Scott Arfield's in the box. Oh, yeah, 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 right. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> just yeah. a, one ball that. goes out and another ball just appears. It's I know. A, it's the, incredible. Your own play, uh, if Joe Hart plays that out to his own player, mm-hmm. his own player can touch it no. inside yes. the box. Yeah. A couple of years ago. I know, an opposing player cannot? No. Yeah. yeah. So here we are, that triple change, that Celtic are about to make. It's happening now, I should say. Maeda, Turnbull, Moy all on, so... What does that look like? Jota or Abada? Right, okay, I think I'll probably be... O'Reilly and Hatati. Yeah. And Jota probably. I would go safeguard that. It's not going to be James Forrest. Did you see that astonishing statistic? Oh, incredible, 14 years. After he scored. He's now scored in 14 consecutive Rainer. seasons. He's also now on, is it 99 goals and 98 assists? For Celtic, and well, only Jimmy Johnson and Henrik he, Larsson. He's one of my Celtic, as much as Arfield I've got Forrest as my Celtic one. I'll, I'll go with the old guard. I like to stick with the guys that have been there, done it, you know, and got the t shirt. And Forrest is certainly one of them. And I still think Forrest has got so much to offer. I really do, Roger. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just unfortunate the talent that Celtic just now, and the pace and the energy and the goals that are coming think, for the wide area. I think the record's 15 seasons, isn't it? 15 consecutive. Matt O'Reilly is going to be the first player withdrawn of this three and replaced by David Turnbull. As you would expect, he's in no hurry to come off. It's the only thing Celtic haven't hurried to do all afternoon. He's put in a fair shift, Mark. The pass for the third goal, the second goal, was it? Sorry. Um, yeah. a ma- it's a match winning pass. An- unbelievable ability. The vision to see it, but then the execution to pull it off. Uh, incredible. I think he's done. Um, What's a bad? Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a bad afternoon for him. Two mm. goals. Gordon, a middle a debate about whether he should play or not. Well, I'm sure a lot of Celtic fans would have probably have said, "Well, Maeda is the number one uh, pick." But I think uh, the fact the way he played up at Tannadice, hat trick, everything about him, and look, he, he he showed the manager picked the right player today. You can't ask for any better than than two goals. And obviously, Hatati, I thought he looked like he was tiring a little yeah. bit, but a good three to bring on, not bad. The Danish national uh, team will no slouches, does. Go to the semis of the Euros, took England to extra time in the semis at Wembley. Could Matt O'Reilly 
get into that Danish squad for the World Cup the way he's playing just now? I, I think he's he's an incredible player. I, really, I, I didn't think he was as good when he arrived. I didn't know a lot about him. I watched him the first, and then all of a sudden, he's just got everything in his locker for me as a midfield player. What I just think he's getting better and better, what, Roger. What, I really do. What, what about the guy they decided at Fulham were going to let him go? Mm. I think he's still in the game. Who? Who was it? I don't know. No, oh, no, no. I thought you were no, going no, to come no, out with no, a no, big no, name there. No, no. Just on money substitute. Abada. I don't think Abada gets enough credit, credit. for yeah. what he does. He's 20 year old. <laughs> he came to Celtic. He scored in his debut against Michelin. He followed it up with 16 goals that season. He scored five this season. How many has he scored against Rangers now? Four against Rangers in total. Two today. Did he score two? He scored two back in February, didn't he? And he's still not an automatic. No, pick. just one. Hatati got two. Oh, Hatati yeah, got yeah. two. Sorry. So incredible stats for somebody so young, and he, you know, just in his second season. Yeah, it's funny how this thing can work two ways, Mark. Because you've said in the show in the past, and I, and I tend to agree, young. Scottish players get more criticism sometimes than, than foreign players that come over because they're, they're not as flash I wonder if it can work both ways if Abada was a 19, 20 year old academy graduate I wonder if you know, he would actually get more pre- do you see what I mean how yeah, it can, it yeah, can yeah, be yeah. spun yeah. both yeah, ways because yeah, that totally we, we talk about Scottish players when they're 19 as if that's really young and we've got to ease them in and he looks like he's been a first team player for you know a decade I think, he gets a cre- I, I think he gets a lot of credit I really do I, I, I wouldn't say as much as Jota um, yeah. and And when you look at his return Assists Goals You know Even like I said When he came in And he's, he's scoring on his debut He's 20 year old You know Think how many years He's got ahead of him He's been an incredible signing Probably 13 if he retires At 33 <laughs> 7 if he retires When you did mm. <laughs> oh, that's a bit cruel. <laughs> that's a very bit cruel there. I not, think you're one out. Whoa, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's not, it's not some sort of joke. It's just a fact. Uh, Twenty-one. I chucked it. <laughs> um, Celtic do have the ball in an attacking area, but not really in too much of a rush to make anything happen. As it's understandable. I'll tell you what a pass that is from Jota <laughs> into David Turnbull, and who's in the box, forced to come out the way. Um, yeah, it's just been very controlled, hasn't it, Mark? Yeah, and Jota just enjoying himself now. He knows he's done the the difficult stuff in the first half. It gave James Tavernier a nightmare and goals, and you've got to say and goals in as well. You know, running between them, running at them, getting his goal. Now he's just eased off a bit. As as much of the Celtic team. But yeah, that, was, that was nice from Aaron Moy, <laughs> uh, who got in just ahead of of Scott Arfield. Eventually, the cross from Maeda was not. Perfect and uh, cleared away. It's just a game that Celtic are quite happy to again with their three 0 victory uh, take all the pats in the back, and I think Rangers would be quite happy to get the Celtic back losing three after the first half performance to Celtic. So, but I still think there's a goal. Oh, he has to, he has to lay that yes. off. There. Yeah, Celtic are probably guilty of overplaying a bit. Lots of touches. Um, at the edge of the box Jack and Sakala coming on for Rangers the, the latest throw of the dice 15 to go well Giovanni Van Bronckhurst is probably mine's turn to midweek as well a big game coming up his players have put a lot in today you know in terms of when you're getting absolutely battered and Celtic are moving you all over the pitch still a lot of running even though we've been critical of Tillman no what to run back oh. when you're chasing shadows oh. it's difficult speaking of which David Turnbull has got Connor Goldson in absolute knots here uh, and eventually it goes out to the right hand side very sl- very sl- lackadaisical from Goldson good from Turnbull Juranovic's shot is over I would have hit the target there Daz you would have, you'd have hit it into the ground <laughs> hit off someone and but obviously the same, same bounced area. over yeah. a goalkeeper well remember his goal before he came he Celtic Juranovic yeah, yeah. it was his last game yeah I think so oh, it was about that distance right into the top corner so he's got it in his locker you, still, you, you look at the game if there's going to be a fourth goal in this game you would still put money on Celtic scoring it rather than yeah. Rangers getting a consolation but, because yeah it looks like it just mm. there's those double changes so Lundstrom and Kent off Jack and Sakala on um this game always distorts the rest of the afternoon because it's so big and it kicks off early and there's a lot to be said about it. So let's try and get some team news from the other games that go around them at the moment. Fir Park to start because that's a cracker between Motherwell and Dundee United, Gabriel. Yes, Gordon. Motherwell against Dundee United here and both teams have named unchanged lineups. I think that points to the fact that they're both victorious, important victories midweek in the League Cup. We'll start with the hosts. 
uh, uh, manager Stevie Hamill unchanged 4-3-3 it's Liam Kelly in goal the back four Paul McGinn Sondre Solholm Johansson Ricky Lamy and Matt Penny in the back four midfield three of Sean Goss I'm sorry Gabriel I'm going to have to interrupt because we've got one of these and it is a disaster for John McLaughlin Goal Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvement Celtic 4, Rangers 0 and it's David Turnbull John McLaughlin who's already had criticism for his part in trying to save the earlier Celtic goals he has passed the ball straight to David Turnbull 12, uh, right on the edge of the box sorry and the, the Celtic midfielder won't have an easier goal all season he slips it beyond the Rangers keeper Disaster does not cover that, Roger Hanna. Rangers supporters will want John McLaughlin out of the team and will want Alan McGregor back into the team. The ones who don't will want John <sighs> McLaughlin out of the team and Robbie McCrory into the team. And the ones who don't want that will want a new goalkeeper signed in January. John McLaughlin, as Jim Duffy said at half time, was at fault for two, possibly three of the first goals. He has laid the fourth on a silver salver for David Turnbull. What's he thinking? Appalling about goalkeeping. What's he thinking? I, he, he, I think he gets. I think he panics. I think he takes too much time. He ends up panicking and he just kicks the ball for the sake of it, right to Turnbull, who says, "Thank you very much. I'll make it four uh, nil." Yeah, I totally agree. With you. I think we've got a lot of phone calls tonight about the goalkeeper. He's had an absolute uh, nightmare. Today. Mark, mm. Rangers have been miles off this, so it's not only John McLaughlin's fault. But you could make a case to say that he he could have done better for all four goals. Yeah, and I mean yeah, that that, yeah. that one's not that one's as bad a mistake as you'll see. Yeah, we said right from the first goal should have saved that, and there is a case for the other goals. That I'm afraid is as bad as you'll see. Now playing out on the six yard line is a new thing. I never got to experience it, so I always thought looking at it, it looks like it brings its own dangers. But when you've got your goalkeeper doing that indecision, Daz is right. I think he panics. I mm. think he's thinking. I don't know where to pass this here. And soon as indecision it, creeps in, you always seem to underhit things. And he's, oh, I know. I, t- I take the guy's point, Roger. That, you know they've been there from outside. Oh, there's there, there's underhit and there's underhit. Right, he's, he's rolled it straight to David Turnbull's the, the, the Rangers goalkeeper has gone. Yeah. He tried to play one to Connor Goldson. It went nowhere near Connor Goldson. It went between Goldson and Tavernier. Celtic nearly seized on it again. The message from the Rangers bench now needs to be: you're four 0 down, guys. Let's just stop this Shell the ball Get mm. it up the park A remarkable afternoon At Celtic 4 Rangers nil. Sorry Gabriel Just take it from the top Of those teams if you can I know they were both unchanged Yeah both unchanged Gordon We'll start again With Motherwell As Stevie Howell names A 4-3-3 lineup That did win 4-0 Over Inverness midweek It's Liam Kelly in goal The back four of Paul McGinn Sondre Solholm Johansson Ricky Lamy and Matt Penny Midfield three of Sean Goss Calum Slattery and Ross Tierney With Blair Spittle Kevin Van Veen And Joel Efford up top on the banks, Oxburgh, O'Donnell, Mugabe, Maguire, McKinstry, Cornelius, Aarons, Shield and Ross. No place, though, for new signing uh, Louis Malt. Of course, that just went through yesterday and he is not going to be seen today. And what about managerless Dundee United? Well, they are bottom of the table, but they are unchanged from their cup win at Livingston midweek. Uh, Scott Fox is in charge of the team. They've got a 5-3-2 formation with Carl Johan Eriksson in goal, Liam Smith, Ryan Edwards, Ross Graham, Charlie Mulcrew and Aziz Behic as the back five. Ian Hark still in 11th and Jamie McGrath in midfield with Tony Watt and Stephen Fletcher up top. The substitutes are Newman, McMahon, Niskanen, Sibbald, Middleton, Mikkelsen, Sadat, Freeman and Kujo. And the referee here is Craig Napier. Craig Napier, the man in the middle. Uh, interesting team news off the back of those two impressive wins in the Cup. Both unchanged for the Clyde One Super Scoreboard Derby between Motherwell and Dundee United. Um, we'll just pause for breath because 81 and a half gone, Celtic 4, Rangers 0. Um, with 10 minutes to go, Roger, look, 4 0 is ugly. This, this is an old firm game, a Glasgow Derby. That, this is ugly, but the Rangers have to make sure this doesn't become an absolute massacre that they or the manager might not recover from. Yeah, the, the Sky Sports camera is currently focusing on Alan McGregor on the Rangers bench. Um, because the absence of Alan McGregor and Giovanni Van Bronckhurst's insistence in using John McLaughlin has been exposed this afternoon. He, you could be looking at an argument that he has had a hand in all four Celtic goals. And we've, we've said before, John McLaughlin's a good goalkeeper, Gordon. Celtic and Rangers don't deal in good goalkeepers. Celtic and Rangers deal in great goalkeepers. Mark Wilson standing to my left here, a man who mm. played behind, in front of, I should say, Arthur Boric. A great Celtic goalkeeper. Yep. You know, Rangers have had great goalkeepers, McGregor being the latest of them. And I'm afraid 
John McLaughlin is a downgrade on Alan McGregor but at a the, time the, when Rangers need Gordon, an upgrade. The, the reason why, though, it can't surely become all about John McLaughlin is because although the Celtic fans feel Joe Hart's a great goalkeeper, he's not had to be today. Yeah, because his defence. Every bit of the Rangers team's been off it. Yeah, I totally agree, and that's where it'll. Uh, it's, it's hard, hard for a goalkeeper because all the spotlight will go on John McCall. No, no doubt about that. But he's he's had no protection. He's made the mistakes, but he's had no protection. The Rangers players will be, have been off it. Celtic have been far too good for him. But at the stage, Mark, in a, in a roundabout way, bear with me to try and make it make sense. The second half might be worse than the first because Rangers have. Have gone. If you were hoping that okay, you've you've started the game terribly and it's away, can you at least show a reaction? Do you mm. know what I mean? Can you at least make yeah. something happen? Can you at least get close? Can you get about? Celtic are playing an exhibition at the yeah. moment. Well, back in February, manager makes changes. There was a difference. Jack kind of drove his team on, and they were better. I mean, Celtic are, are toying with Rangers at the minute, and you got to save. They could add to this I, I know there's only 7 or 8 minutes left But they could add to this Right we're going to get team news From the 3 o'clock games Because there are other big fixtures I know it doesn't seem that way To some of you But don't look beyond these Because they're crackers Livy Hearts David Friel Yeah another super scoreboard derby as well Gordon And Andy Halliday starts Against Martin Marvin Bartley's Livingston uh, Livy are going to go 4-3-2-1 Shamal George in goals Nicky Devlin Sean Kelly Ayo Obelai Christian Montano at the back Stefan Omionga Jason Holt, James Penrice as the middle three with Ismael and Calvez, Scott Pittman behind Joel Nibley. Subs for Levy are Hamilton, Longridge, Brandon, Bitsindu, Kanka, Kelly, Baham Bula, Penrice and Guthrie. As for Hearts, obviously juggling domestic European commitments. I think there's five changes from the midweek defeat to Kilmarnock. It's a 4 2 3 1 formation and Stephen Humphreys is straight in for his debut. So Craig Gordon in goals. Back four of Toby Sibic, Lewis Nielsen, Stephen Kingsley and Alex Cochrane. Cammy Devlin and Andy Halliday are holding the midfield with GMS, George Grant and Barry Mackay in behind Humphreys. Subs for Hearts are Stuart. Michael Smith, Herring, Shankland, Forrest Henderson, Connor Smith and Josh Janelli and the referee at the Tony Macaroni is Willie Collum This is why we're everywhere What a Clyde 1 Super Scoreboard derby that is Martin Bartley up against Andy Halliday from the touchline <laughs> Are you still <laughs> sure I'm that you didn't call him Martin the other night? I'm denying Mark Wilson, that did, You were on listening. holiday Did you hear it on I holiday? I was listening no, did Roger, call did you hear it? I actually didn't hear right, it well, I'll, I'll let you no, decide no, no. I will oh, I was getting texts uh -huh. about it as the show went. Right, I'll, saying, let, I'll let you decide, he's, okay? He's done it again. Listen carefully. And, and as Barnabin says. Turn it up for you. <laughs> and, and as Barnabin says. Yeah. yeah. And, and as Barnabin says. It's <laughs> <laughs> Marvin! Do you know something? I, I actually write his name down, right? I love the big guy. He's brilliant, great fun, by the way. I love to do Thursdays and Tuesdays with him. Uh, good <laughs> chemistry. Uh, but I didn't say that. I did say Marvin. No, what? Well, it's I've, clear as day. Quite nah, literally, have, just played it. You've doctored that. Oh, the way you can do it. <laughs> Producer Callum's not that good, quite frankly. No offence to him. Sorry, I'm sorry, but that, that's and that big that, stupid lad. It's uh, where is he? Hearts and Livingston. Uh, David Friel. Yeah, that's the boy. Can't remember his name either. <laughs> no, I can't. No, <laughs> Derek Friel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big posties they call him. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Martin. Uh, another lull in play 86 gone Who's that? Is it Tavernier? Tavernier's down Yeah he's down 4-0 to Celtic What about The Battle of the Saints Fraser Wishart Yeah Battle of the Saints No battle from Super Scoreboard Here for the The game in Perth A bit wet And a bit windy So hopefully we've got A decent game There's been two changes Made by Callum Davidson Brown and Phillips Dropped to the bench With Adam Montgomery He'll be happy man At the Celtic result He's on loan from there And Nicky Clark New signing Come in 3-4-1-2 formation Ryan Matthews Is in goals A back three Ryan McGowan Alec Mitchell And Andy Considine Midfield Dre Wright Melker Halberg Graham Carey And Adam Montgomery With Jimmy Murphy Behind the two strikers Stevie May And Nicky Clark Parish Kucharavi Gordon Crawford Phillips Bear O'Halloran McLennan And Brown Are uh, the subs unchanged Unsurprisingly, three wins in a row, three clean sheets in a row for St. Mirren. Unchanged 3 5 2 formation, Trevor Carson in goals, Marcus Fraser, Declan Gallagher, and Charles Dunn at the back. In midfield, Ryan Strain, Keanu Bacchus, Ethan Erehon, Marco Hara, and Richard Tate with Jonah Ayunga and Curtis Main as the strikers. On the bench are Minsky, Shaughnessy, Tanzer, Gogic, Flynn, Kilty, Henderson, Grieve, and Brophy. And the referee uh, today, I mean, Derek Park, is Colin Stephen. Colin Stephen, the game, uh, the referee there, I should say, Battle of the Saints. Looking forward to that one, St. Mirren. We were getting all your negativity a few weeks ago, St Mirren fans, uh, and it's quite the turnaround. Free kick to Rangers in what would be right on the edge of shooting territory. Might, yeah, it's a bit far actually, isn't it? I take it back. 40-odd yards, Gordon? No. 
anyone fancy it? Ah, peace. Well, having a go, would well, you know? I was going to say the way Shot the goal. games have gone, uh, the game's gone, Gordon. May as well just have a, a dig at goals because they don't look a threat. If they put it wide and put it in, Celtic are defending it. But if you're beating Joe Hartfi there. I'm walking out of this studio and never returning. Oh, happy days. Spawn a Barisic, what have you got for us? Come on. Don't let us down. That. <laughs> no, why, say, why you didn't say that? A big call. <laughs> <laughs> he can't I'm roasting the one home. For the first time in his lengthy career, Mark Wilson is willing <laughs> to Come on, Borna. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> yeah. 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 I've yeah. always believed in you, Borna. <laughs> Tav uh, Mark started referring to him as Tav Now that he's uh, standing over this ball no, He's just chipped it uh, He's chipped it into the box It's head up a crush you know uh, think, what, what, what was I the deal there only directly from the oh, shot yeah, oh, There right, was okay. no chance he was shooting from there By the way that's ended up about as close as we've come for Rangers I do not know why Maeda was marking Goldson You've no uh, idea the panic in my fans out there Listening to Super Score <laughs> Yeah mm. both, both of them would have been heartbroken <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you never know Some chance for Rangers to I wouldn't even save any face really would it None whatsoever um, But you know There's a corner in the, in the closing stages here I, I won't break away just yet We'll need to get team news from Some other game As if this ga- day wasn't big enough with this game Every team in the top flight plays on the same day uh, We don't get that too often Is Heather it, White. The other one not known now as a wimpy derby Ross County versus Aberdeen Oh yes Yes <laughs> we'll need, and, and he's there We'll need to get an update if he's gone do you go for a second wimpy in the space oh, of a fortnight? Oh, you We'll find out in a minute because it's another corner to Rangers, so I don't want to leave it. Just but Mark's pal Borner's not even in any hurry here. I know they're just wanting off the pitch now, aren't they? Borner wants to run the down the clock. To open up and swallow him at the minute. Yeah, the, yeah. the Celtic fans in the corner now getting yeah, him the no. warmest of welcomes. They're, they're wishing him well. Good, good luck for Croatia in the next game. They're saying. <coughs> um, and yeah, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a delay. This one it is eventually. Whipped in Rangers get ahead to it But not anywhere near uh, The goal And He's a bit of a Tunicell oh, no. bunny Oh no It's uh, Oh no, oh, no. no. no that should oh, be right done. It's out the oh, oh he is lucky Shades of John Lundstrom At Easter Road And if everyone said uh, That should have been a yellow But what, Goulton maybe a me, bit worse For me That's worse than Lundstrom yeah. uh, That's uh, worse that's, that's close to Ross Callaghan mm, territory John uh, Connor Goulton Goes into the book <sighs> What about he, the pace of him? How close Look, it's become the benchmark. Is this John Lundstrom or is it is no. it Ross Callaghan? Mm, it's somewhere in between. Yeah, it's not Ross Callaghan because it's not the old scissor. That's nah. similar to Lundstrom's, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Lundstrom. He's just taking one for the team, yeah. as they say, Roger. I'll take that back. It did look in real no. time. It did look okay. Nasty, so but... you're happy with the yellow card? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I tell you what, I I think he's quite right to have. You know, stopped uh, Maeda in his tracks because he was away. He'd left Davis for for dead, and he was really going to put pressure on the. I noticed Rangers, this. At, I noticed this at Tannadice last week when Celtic had scored nine. Two minutes added on. Roger makes no difference to us because we'd quite like to move on and get to the rest of the games. I'm struggling to fit everything in. But is it is it now allowed that if a team's winning by a, a margin that you only you just add on one or two minutes? Well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Yeah, like six I mean, changes have been all yeah, yeah. And Starfield's been done, and mm. who else has been done? Uh, Jota. Uh, Jota, Tavernier was down for a bat. Uh, I don't know what's went on there. Yeah, I remember that game at Hamden when I beat 7 0. We played 68 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be a free kick to Rangers because Jota goes thundering into Scott Wright. We are into two minutes added on. Let's go quickly. The Wimpy Derby. Dave Galloway, just quickly because we're pushed for time. Did you get the Wimpy? I, I did. I had a mega <laughs> burger. It was very nice. So I've, I've sent a picture through. Oh, great. I look um, forward to yeah. seeing it. Give us the teams now. Anyway, to the teams. Uh, Ross County makes six changes. In come Laidlaw. Baldwin, Cancola, Calican, Danda and Hewula out draw Eastwood, Watson, Loturi, Sims, Samuel and Harmon so it's Laidlaw in goals across the back Johnson, Baldwin, Jakoviti and Purrington the sitting midfielders Tilson and Cancola with Danda, Calican and Hewula behind the main striker White subs for County Eastwoods Awura, Samuel, Sims, Loturi, Watson Olegbi, Akio and and Peyton Aberdeen three changes for them in come Hayes, Clarkson and Coulson out go Mackenzie, Morris and Kennedy it's Ruse in goals a back four of Richardson, Stewart, Scales and Coulson the sitters Ramadani and McCrory further forward Clarkson, Bissouin and Hayes with 
Majowski leading the line. The subs for the Dons, Lewis, McKenzie, Morris, Lopez, Watkins, Polvara, Duncan, Milne and Kennedy. And your match referee at the Global Energy Stadium, Kevin Clancy. Full-time Celtic Park, Andrew McLean. Celtic 4, Rangers Mill, the full-time score here at Celtic Park. A blistering performance from Ange Postacoglu's men sees them open up a five-point gap at the top of the Premiership and it's the only the beginning of September it's not good news early on for Celtic Kilgore was forced off very early with a shoulder injury Jack Amakis came on for him and the home side then ran away with it in the first half eight minutes in they took a quick throw in Jossa with a low cross first time into the box there was Leila Bada to sweep that one home question marks over John McLaughlin he got his hand to it just couldn't keep the ball out of the back of the net though Jack Amakis and Cholak both missed good headed chances at either end before Celtic made it two just after the half hour mark a quick free kick was worked to Matt O'Reilly a wonderful through ball from him to find Jota and he'd think the ball over John McLaughlin to make it 2-0 Abada then made it 2 for him and 3 for Celtic before the break Greg Taylor's low cross found the winger in the middle of the box he fired through the legs of John McLaughlin to make it embarrassing for Rangers before 45 minutes were up Rangers made some changes across the second half to try and get back in the game but there was really no bite at all no big chances created and Celtic just cruised through the rest of the game and the champions were gifted a fourth as well a moment of madness from John McLaughlin who'd already been called into question for his efforts to the goal this time he passed the ball straight to David Turnbull in the Rangers box and he just calmly finished it to round off the victory a day that will live long in the memory for both sets of fans but for very very different reasons Celtic showing the quality and ruthlessness Rangers frail at the back and almost anonymous at the other end the full time score here at Celtic Park is Celtic 4 Rangers nil and Jim Duffy it's a huge victory for Celtic oh, it's a comprehensive and deserved victory for, for Celtic um, Rangers had no answer to you know the all aspects of Celtic play the tempo the energy the quality uh, you know everything about Celtic day was first class and they just completely demoralised Rangers um, it wasn't until the last couple of minutes that uh, Joe Hart had end to do whatsoever actually one of these saves came from Callum McGregor another one a little comfortable save but uh, right throughout the game, um, you know, Celtic dominated in all areas. They were strong defensively, you know, and midfield, uh, you know, they were inventive, creative, dynamic, and up front with a threat right through the game. Uh, we asked about calls for the manager, bringing a bad hand, leaving me out. Scores two goals. Jota, once again, an absolute joy to watch. Even losing Kyogo, uh, who's actually just fallen, trying to celebrate with the, the fans there. I hope he's not injured that shoulder any worse. Um, but after losing Kyogo after even less than a minute it uh, didn't impact him uh, Giamakis come on gave him a different uh, focal point but right throughout the, 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 the whole 92 minutes Celtic were immense uh, and you have to say thoroughly deserved the 4 nothing um, scoreline didn't flatter him obviously a horrible mistake from John, uh, John McLaughlin late in the game but that really just was the ice in the cake for Celtic and uh, you know again it just sends the, those warning signs out to every other club in the country the Celtic are in dominant fashion just now well the party is only just starting in the east end of Glasgow the full time score here Celtic 4 Rangers 0 do you know what it's going to be a busy afternoon but I think we've got a window Rangers fans Celtic fans call us right now 01419511025 where did it go right Celtic fans how bad was that Rangers fans we'll speak to you next let's go Clyde One's Super Scoreboard Podcast with Taggart's Volvo, part of the Lucas family. Be ready for any journey. Book now for service and repairs.